order. Roll call. Mr. Maurer. Here. Mayor Breeden. Here. Mr. Martin. Here. Ms. Stevens. Here. Four present, one absent. We do have a quorum. Okay, approval of the agenda. Motion. So moved. Second. Oh. Okay, we're going to do the uh, voting. Oh, we're gonna He's got to bring the oh, slide that's up. Right. So, okay. yeah. One is yes. Per huh? per perhaps, if I, may, if I may make a suggestion for us. Oh, you've already got it. I was going to say for something as simple as approving the agenda, it can be done by the mayor saying any objections. And then. Okay. I can do that. It's not as fun. Right, right, right. Good point. So, um, okay. There we yes. go. Four yeses, one absent. Motion carries. Gee, it actually worked. Yes. I'm going to give a disclaimer before the meeting about that. Okay. So, uh, public comment on closed session. Since there is no public here, I will not read that, and we will go to uh, closed session. Do you have someone who's going to go to prayer? Good. Isn't that good break? I didn't say something. I love it. Okay, let's see. It's 6 o'clock. So being 6 o'clock, I'm going to call the meeting to order in regular session. And... Um, let me see, somebody who hasn't, would you lead us in the pledge, please? I haven't asked you before. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray, please. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful for the opportunity we have of uh, meeting together tonight. We're thankful for this great nation that we live in and for this wonderful community that uh, we're able to reside in. We ask thy spirit to be with us tonight to guide and direct so that we might make the proper decisions for our city, that we might be able to improve the lives of our community and uh, go forth in that matter, and that we might be able to respect others' opinions. We pray for these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Please be seated, everyone. Okay, the next item is um, closed session report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, two items were discussed. Uh, they were potential claims, and uh, the city council voted unanimously to uh, settle the matters, both matters. Thank you. Nothing else. No other. Then would you uh, 
Uh, Chief, would you join us up here and make a presentation? And do you mind if we come down and share it with you? Sure. We'll just stand there and go, yay. <laughs> just stand there and go, yay. Yeah. Officer Roland, come on up. <clears throat> um, this is a proud moment because this is Officer Roland's second one of these, so it's very special. On November 30th, 2017, uh, officers were dispatched to a report of an overdose. Upon arriving on scene, uh, Officer Roland and Officer Plunkett were faced with an aggressive dog that they had to deal with. Once they got the dog secured, they immediately saw a subject, a victim, laying on the ground, unresponsive. Due to his quick actions, and Officer Roland could not locate a pulse, he immediately started CPR. After about two minutes of doing CPR on the victim, the victim started to breathe. And due to Officer Roland's outstanding performance under a stressful situation, a life was saved. Therefore, Officer Roland, you're being recognized and commended for your quick response and care of this victim with a, your second life-saving award. And with the life-saving award, he's already got the ribbon on, so. He'll add the gold star to it now. So. We um, we're very blessed in the sense that we, you know. This isn't a difficult job to do. Um, we, <laughs> we, as, as policemen, you know, we do encounter a lot of different situations, but we have the backing of a of a fantastic city council. We have the backing of a fantastic administrative staff that provides us with the training and the know-how that we that we have to have in order to, you know, effectively uh, serve you you guys. Um, we we do the best that we can. We hope that we do a good job. We hope that you guys are proud of us. We strive every day to, to go out and, and make the city proud um, because we are representatives of you. I mean, we, you know, every time that we put on our badge and, and our uniform, you guys are our top priority. You know, it's not what we do at home. It's not what we've got going on. It's not, you know, problems at home or problems at work. It's, it's your guys' problems. If you guys have a problem, if it's important to you, it's important to us. And we're, we're very, very fortunate to have the, the backing of such a fantastic city. So thank you for that. many of you hear what might quote be bad things, but I received two letters in the past month about something wonderful our police department has done and our officers have done, and I am so very proud of our department. You may never ever hear all these things, but somehow those awful things that either are not true, are not reality based, we have a great department, and I am so very proud of all of them. So thank you, Chief. Thank your team. 
for us. Thank you. Okay, everybody, the next item is public comment. Persons wishing to address the council on matters that are within the council's jurisdiction and do not already appear in the agenda may do so at this time. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the city council may not take action on that item because it does not appear on the agenda. Speakers are limited to five minutes. The public comment section of the agenda is limited to a total of one hour. Each speaker is asked to please provide his or her name. Those people wishing to speak, uh, Mr. Matthews. Yes, good evening. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. And I just want to say, if uh, we ever get a 911 call from my place, I want that officer to come. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope I never, <coughs> never have to do that, but you never know. Anyway, it's another, another new year. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it was an end of a bad one you know, for me. <coughs> um, I want the council to consider what has been going on or what is going on in this state and start thinking about ways that you, the council, the city of Ridgecrest, can start pushing back. We cannot no longer depend on Sacramento to do the job that we need to do. Yes. So just ponder those words for the new year and let's get started. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Stan Rotora. I'm a 45-year-old resident of the Valley. Um, it's a new year. Um, totally agree with Dave. There's, there's a uh, number of things that have been put on the back burner over the last few months uh, and years, as far as that goes, that I'd like to see come out to the forefront and be dealt with by this group uh, in front of the public. Um, a few months back, there were two council members that suggested that we purchase a paver for street paving. Uh, that was going pretty good, I thought, and then all of a sudden it got dropped. Um, and the paving season is going to be here before we know it. Um, and there's probably not a lot of these pavers that are just there, ready to be bought. There's probably a time lag. There's a crew to train. So I'd like to see that topic be given priority for this council and be on the council's agenda so that we can move forward. Um, second topic, something a little bit older than that. Uh, back in 2010, we joined with the Navy to apply for an EPA grant for a new wastewater treatment plant. Um, it's 2018, it's been over seven years since we've been working with the Navy, and there seems like every year to be less and less information shared regarding where we are, what we're doing, the progress we're making, et cetera. Um, if we're making progress, I think we need to share it. Uh, if we're not making progress, we need to go a different route. Uh, so again, this is an item that hasn't been discussed here in the council for it seems like forever, and I think we need to have that as an agenda item as well so we can get it out in the open, find out what's going on, and try to move forward in one direction or another. Um, item number three. Uh, last November, the Finance Committee uh, discovered a discrepancy in the FY18 budget of over a million dollars regarding transfer funds. Um, I haven't heard anything. I did miss a... Uh, City Council meeting while I was sick, but I, I don't believe it was actually discussed at the City Council meeting. Um, my understanding is that we've hired another consultant to tell us what we should know ourselves 
uh, because we don't have a finance director. We, we hire too many consultants, but indeed, we need to get this out in front of the people. Uh, we need to talk about it. We need to figure out how a million dollar discrepancy is going to be dealt with in the F-18 budget. F-18, pardon me, the FY-18 budget's half over, so there's not a lot of uh, time to fix it. Um, two more short things. Uh, I've requested oh, two or three, maybe four times, information regarding the vehicle ISF budget information on the general fund, and it seems like I'm having just one heck of a time getting it. I don't know why. Um, it's a simple thing. It ought to be straightforward, and yet for some reason uh, the public can't get the information. I'd like to see that fixed. There's no reason for the city to hide financial information. Uh, the other thing I've asked for on more than one occasion is the budget transfers out of various funds. Again, simple thing to do. We just put three-quarters of a million dollars into um, a new financial finance system. No reason why we can't get that data out. It should be simple. It should be straightforward. And it's, it's a simple matter of telling the public what's going on in the finance system. And that's all. I thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Council. What would a meeting be without comments from Dave Matthews, Stan Rator, and Mike Neal? <laughs> Where would you guys be? I hope I hope uh, you don't need us too bad when we finally go away someday. I like to call it the city the citizens council because we're not uh, bound by like you guys are, and we can uh, stick our noses in wherever we want to, and, and we do. Thank you very much. Anyway, uh, I watched the video of the last meeting, and I noticed how uh, the gentleman that that I, I declined to respond to his presentation when he was up here, I don't know, three or four meetings back, was treated as, as a VIP and talked to like this, the council was going to pave the way for the project that he's heading up, which of course is the EDC's water sports complex. So I don't know if anybody thought very deeply or not when the presentation about that was, was made uh, or if any of the, the public caught it, but uh, I'd just like to point out the simple fact that uh, the cost for it, the $14 million water sports complex, was put forward with all the revenues and everything, and oh, look, we're short a million and a half dollars every year on income. Oh, by the way, you know, those are typically subsidized by the cities. So, what does that mean? Well, that means they're going to be coming to you, wanting you to get your wallet out and pay that one and a half million dollars every year. Well, what are they doing? They're trying to, they're gonna, they're gonna do just like they're proposing tonight. They wanna to put a tax assessment on the properties because that's the easiest thing to get passed. Most people don't pay attention to the mail out ballot, ballots and uh, the easiest thing to sell in terms of propaganda telling you that you're gonna get all this great benefit from it and then get you to pay uh, yet another $150 per year tax assessment on your property. Uh, last meeting we had a lady, I believe is present here, I think, Ms. Kite, talked about how we're taxed and we're taxed and we're taxed and we're taxed and we're taxed. Well, guess what? It's not done around here yet. The, the, the groundwater authority uh, has yet to come around getting money out of your pocket, and it's going to be a lot. You, you count on it. So uh, I saw that and I just thought, I mean, I have to just be honest, okay? Are they out of their minds? I mean, has somebody, like, been eating something at those EDC meetings that's affecting their brain function or something for them to come up here and tell us that they want this grandiose water park, somehow it's going to bring us such great benefit, and they want us all to pay another $150 per year tax on top of all the other taxes that keep getting stuck up and the council wants us to pay and the state wants us to pay and the county's going to want us to pay. And I don't understand it. So I hope that the council 
is uh, not already decided. This is a grand and glorious idea, and all they need to do is figure out a way to push forward the tax on us because, uh, as for me, it's going to be a big fight because I don't want to pay that much money for an overdone water park. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, no more public comment? No more. No more. Oh, sorry. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and staff. Uh, my name is Cal Rossi. I'm a government relations manager with Southern California Edison. I wanted to follow up on an email you may have received a couple of weeks ago. And uh, didn't want to take up a lot of your time tonight, but simply wanted to drop by and introduce myself. Uh, I look forward to working with each and every one of you, as well as your staff, uh, to address uh, issues of concern that you may have. Uh, I believe uh, the city clerk had handed out cards. Uh, please feel free to contact me at any time. Uh, that is my cell number on there. Uh, and again, I look forward to working with you and representing uh, uh, the city of Ridgecrest uh, to Southern California Edison. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any others? <clears throat> Got one more, Madam Mayor. Okay. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Happy New Year to everybody. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Happy New Year to all of you. I'm David Liviano, the new music teacher at Ridgecrest Charter School. And I'd like to take the moment to thank the Mayor personally for helping us put on a wonderful winter concert with the 400 children at the Ridgecrest Charter School on December 21st. And also all the sponsors in our beautiful city, Ridgecrest, that have contributed to the success of the concert. And uh, today I had the pleasure of listening to Mr. Ron Strand. He made a wonderful presentation at the Rotary Club at lunch. And one of the things he mentioned uh, fits in with my desire to bring quality music education and overall arts education to Ridgecrest. And uh, the words he used is talking about improvement of quality of life for the residents, the community, and for the new families that are going to be coming in to Ridgecrest. And I believe that arts education and music is a vital component for quality of life for the young people, the children that grow up in this community. And I will start advocating at the city level in uh, Bakersfield and in Sacramento for more funds so we can bring quality arts education both in schools and in our community. It is very sad and disappointing that at the school level there's no music and arts education in the elementary schools. That means K through fifth grade, which is a tremendous anomaly. And imagine children go to sixth grade to learn music, imagine a child has no math or English training and they go into sixth grade with zero training. It's the same thing I speak with my colleagues, uh, Lisa and Simon Austin, Deb Veit, and they're very disappointed that they get children from the elementary school without any preparation and they have to start them off with the basics without being able to start at the sixth grade level for band, orchestra, and chorus. So we're starting to work together to create a little bit of a critical mass so we can attract more funds and bring music education and the arts uh, to become part of uh, the community of Ridgecrest and to, uh, to provide a quality of uh, life uh, improvement as Mr. Strand was talking about. Uh, cross board. So thank you very much for your support. I hope we're going to have a great year and I will do my best to contribute. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, now is there any other public comment? Okay, then we will go to council announcements. Lindsay? Wallace? None for me? <clears throat> What? Um, okay. Well, I can do that now. Okay. Uh, no, Thursday. Okay. Thursday is um, our Fallen Heroes uh, that is out in the uh, Kermigee Center. 
um, they're leaving and they're going to have a ceremony at six o'clock. And if you look at the faces of some of these young men and women, some of them are not so young, some of them are a little older, but people who have given their lives so you and I can live free. And I look at the faces of some of them and one of them, I still see his face and I don't even know who he is or where he's from. But it's like he's found the secret of life and he just didn't have the opportunity to tell us what it was. So if you haven't had there, please had a chance to go by there, please go by now or go by uh, before tomorrow afternoon. It is an amazing, heartfelt story, and what people see and take away, I hope, fills their heart for the rest of the year because it is extraordinary. So, thank you. <clears throat> now you don't have anything. Mike? Go ahead, Lindsay. I'd like to speak after Lindsay. Sorry, I just want to declare, if it's next Wednesday night, the 24th at 6. The closing ceremony. Okay. I didn't have my paperwork and, out. And so. from 12 to 5, it said that they're going to be reading all the names of the 5,000 5, plus fallen. So Yeah, 6 o'clock. My, yeah. my apologies. Thank you. On the 24th. Mayor, I just was... Wanting to talk to you a few seconds about the voting system and to the public. Um, I realize we've been having some issues with it. We believe we have solved a few. Uh, one of the problems was incorporating PowerPoints into there. When we would stop the voting system and put a PowerPoint in there, it would totally disrupt it. So that's why we were having problems before. So I just wanted to let everybody know we, we've put a fix in there. We're trying it this time. We're hoping it's going to be better, and, and <clears throat> we're on our way. So... Hopefully tonight's better than it has been, and appreciate okay. everybody's patience. Thank you, Ricka. Mm -hmm. Okay, no other council um, comments. We'll go to the consent calendar. All items on the consent calendar are considered to be routine by city staff and will be approved in one motion if no member of the council or the public wishes to comment or make questions. If Comment or discussion is desired by anyone that item will be removed from the consent calendar and considered separately with public comment before action is taken. Do any members of the council wish to have any of these items removed after I read them? Number two, proposed action to approve draft minutes of the City of Ridgecrest City Council successor, redevelopment agency, financing authority, housing authority, Regular meeted meeting dated December 20th, 2017. Propo number three, proposed action to approve a resolution by the City of Ridgecrest City Council setting a public hearing for unmet transportation needs. And review, and number four, review and approve recognize obligation payment schedule ROPS 218-19 of the Ridgecrest Redevelopment Successor Agency and approval of the resolution. Does any council member wish any of these items to be pulled? Does the public have any item on those three items that they would like to be pulled? Okay, motion to approve. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. He's gonna change the slide here. Oh, and shoot. I forgot about this. We're gonna vote. We have five yeses. Motion carries. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> Is that a first? Hmm? Is that a first? A first? That none of them will pull. Yeah, yeah uh, perhaps. Well, it's been a long while anyhow. <laughs> yeah. So thank you all. Okay, the next item is item number five, discussion and provide direction to the city's representative and the board of the Indian Wells Valley Groundwater Authority. That is me. There are no specific action items, but I would like to share with you there was some recommendations from the PAC, and they asked for um, it. There was no policy items. They were asking if we would be willing to approve a public comment written comment form 
and that they would keep it and give it to the GSA Council Board and uh, go from there. I didn't think there was anything that anybody would have any problems with. Does anybody have any problem with us saying yes? Okay. The next item, they have already done this, is the meeting dates are always going to be the first Thursday for the PAC and the TAC. The TAC will meet at 1 o'clock and the PAC will meet at 6 o'clock on the first Thursday at the Water District meeting. They were asking for approval um, already done. Um, and the last item was uh, public involvement. They were, that is their mission. That is what the job they're doing. And they're working on that right now and are going to present to us their recognition mission, sorry, of what how they can develop greater public involvement in the process. Again, there is no policy decisions, it's just simply reports. And uh, if anyone desires any action on those other than approval, please let me know. Okay, is there any public comment on that? Good evening again, Stan Rotora. Um, I made a comment at the last Groundwater Authority meeting uh, regarding setting up or or getting the Finance Committee to start meeting. A um, long time ago, there was an ad hoc group set up to start talking about it. In fact, I thought the purpose of the ad hoc committee was to figure out how to form the actual standing finance committee, uh, but nothing happened. Um, obviously, the finances of this thing is going to be a monster. Um, like Mr. Neal said a few minutes ago, we haven't gotten the bill yet for this. I think we're underfunded at this point, underfinanced. Our, our water manager doesn't have enough money to do his job, quite frankly. Uh, we need to start figuring out where the money's coming from and how much money we need. Um, there was a comment, not while I was actually talking at the Groundwater Authority, but I thought one of the gentlemen on the board said, well, we've already looked into all of the issues at this point in time. We don't need to do it anymore. Well, my feeling is probably shouldn't have said that. Wrong thing to say. The purpose of the Brown Act is not to keep people from talking. It's to ensure that people talk, but talk in front of the public. That is, the business of the public is supposed to be done in front of the public. And that's what a finance committee would do. I would like to see our representative from this group initiate action on the, uh, the water board to ensure that the Finance Committee is selected however they want to do it. I mean, I don't care. I just want to see somebody start meeting so that we can have some open and honest discussions regarding how we're going to fund this thing over not not starting two years from now, but starting now, how we're going to fund it now and in the future. Because that's a big hole that nobody is looking at and it needs to be looked at. Thank Stan, you. it is on the agenda, and it's item number 13. It's consideration of revenue measures to fund production of groundwater sustainability plan. There is going to be, we're just getting the reports right now to see what mm. both Peter and Mr. Page, Peter mm. Brown, Director Brown, and uh, Mr. Page from San Bernardino County, who are the committee, with input from others, to uh, come back to us and report. Okay. But you see, in my mind, that information should be coming from the Finance Committee who meets in open, not behind closed doors, and that information is reported out to the public. So and, and the whole idea is do the public's work in front of the public in a finance, and the city has a finance committee, the Water District has a finance committee. They're both very, more or less, anyway, open to, to public discussion and, and oversight. But for one reason or another, 
All this information is coming out from somebody opens a door, throws something mm -hmm. out, and then it's reported on. Now, it may not be that simple, and I, I, don't, mean, I don't mean to, to, do this, to do that, but on the other hand, we need to formalize our approach to dealing with finances, and that should be through an open standing committee that is required to meet in, in, in consistent with the Brown Act. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Being no other discussion on that item. Okay. Number seven. Approve the issuance of refunding six. bonds. Oh, six. six. Good was six. I'm so no, Oh, sorry. I did miss. Um, Mayor Breeden, with concurrence of the council, will appoint a member to the Planning Commission nominated by Councilwoman Stevens. Uh, we have an application. And Lindsay, do you want to talk about your application? Yes, actually, um, Ms. Jessica Roberts Dehan, she's here. You want to give everybody a wave? So um, she has been here for nearly five years. Um, she is actually a physician's assistant at Heather Stone Medical Clinic. Um, she's very active in the community with um, Optimus Club and. A few months ago, she held a sex trafficking workshop, too. And so she's just really passionate about giving back to the community. And so I thought she would be a good fit for this. And, and she wants to get more involved with the government. So, Would you come up? Is there anything you'd like to say? <laughs> I suspect there is. <laughs> do, we have a, do we have a formal application? Yes. Because I stated at a meeting several months ago that I would not vote on one unless I saw an application because we had a problem with an application. I believe she before. forwarded it out in the email. I did. I yeah. emailed it to council. I looked at your email. I didn't see one. Yeah. Did, any, on, did anybody else get it? On Tuesday. Yeah. <clears throat> yesterday, Tuesday? <laughs> oh, I don't remember if it was yesterday or the... Yeah. I think yeah, it was, it was yesterday. before yeah, you just that, turned it in but so maybe yesterday. not. I got it. Saw it. Okay. Yeah. I saw some emails from you, but I didn't catch that one. Okay. I will resend it. Do you have anything you'd like to say, or do you mind if we ask you questions? Um, ask you questions, sure. <laughs> sure. Do you want to talk first? Um, just that I've been in this community yeah, for nearly five years and really love it. And I think that I would just like a chance to serve, learn more, um, and then possibly be involved with local government more in the future. And... Um, I think it's just an opportunity to have someone else's perspective on issues going on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to serve all the, because you will be her appointment as long as you still have two years and a, two and a half years, are you interested in serving that entire time? I am. Um, I have spoken uh, with Lindsay, though, that it is possible I may not be able to stay that, that whole term. Um, not so much by uh, my personal choice, but I am a reservist, um, so there's a chance of deployment. There's a chance that um, my husband may need to get a job elsewhere. Um, but as long as I'm here, I'm willing to serve, and I told her that up front. Um, if you have another applicant who you feel is better because they'd be here long term, you know, that's fine. I'm just here if you have the opportunity for me to. I only saw the one application. There were there no others. Does anybody have questions? <clears throat> no. Okay. Is there a consensus of the board to uh, approve this nominee? I move approval. I second. We don't need to vote, do we, or do we? You just kind of it was concurrence. Yep. Okay. 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 Um, okay. Well, then, with the approval of all the board, I welcome you aboard. Uh, you have a huge job cut out for you because so many new things are coming into the community. You are going to be able to help that happen, and we thank you for that. Uh, I, I'm really excited to see the, the position filled because there's. I attend every planning commission meeting on the last Tuesday of the month, and... You have a huge job, so thank you, an important job. Is there any other comments or anything? Any comments from the public? <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Then we have concurrence, and I welcome you. Thank you. 
Okay, now I know seven is after six. <laughs> Approve the issuance of refunding bonds in order to refund certain outstanding obligations of successor agency to the Ridgecrest Redevelopment Agency approving the forms and authorizing the execution and delivery of the indenture of trust, escrow agreement, and a bond purchase agreement relating thereto requesting oversight board approval of the issuance of the refunding bonds requesting certain determination by the oversight board and provision and providing for other manners related thereto. Uh, Mr. Strand. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, with me tonight, I have uh, Bud Levin from Wolf Hansen. He's our municipal advisor in this area. Um, he will be uh, joining at the podium here in a bit to uh, present a couple of PowerPoint presentations for your review, but just a little background information. Uh, currently, the city has uh, two bonds that the debt service is managed uh, through the successor agency on our ROPS, which is the recognized obligation payment schedule. Um, one of the bonds is the 2005 ROPS. It has about nine years before it's paid off, and the current balance on that is about $5 million. And then we have the 2010 TAB bonds, uh, which has about 19 years left to pay, and uh, the balance on that is about $28 million. So we're looking at a refunding uh, these two bonds uh, in the amount of about $33 million. As you're well aware, the interest rates uh, have dropped considerably since we initially took out these bonds some time ago. So to refund these bonds through a uh, private entity at a lower interest rate, uh, we could save a substantial amount of money on our debt service on our ROPs, uh, anywhere between $7 million <coughs> and $9 million uh, over the next 19 years, depending upon which way we go. Um, now, the, the new Trump tax cuts have had effect on the amount that we can save, as well as the rising interest rates. But we do believe that the savings uh, by moving forward on this are substantial. Uh, they do benefit uh, the city in the sense that we would receive about 7.8% of the savings, which we're estimating at the lower end of about uh, 450000 $450, for the first eight years, and then about 325000 for the remaining 11. That is if we, that's based upon the staff report. Uh, Mr. Levin has another uh, way that we may refund the bonds that might actually raise that number up a little bit. We also would see a, um, a contribution of about 11% to the fire fund on behalf of the city. Uh, we have had, had spoken with the county and they are willing once the, the bonds uh, are refunded to get with us and, and modify our contract so we can take credit for that amount. But however, the biggest winner will probably be the school district because about 70% of this uh, funding that would be saved that would go out to the other tax and entities would go to the school district. So it is a, uh, it's a fairly um, good thing for us to do. Now the process is, is that tonight you're going to be acting as the successor agency for the redevelopment agency. Uh, if you approve this tonight, then it will go to the oversight board next week for their approval. If they approve it, then it goes to the Department of Finance for approval. They have 65 days in which to render an opinion, um, which I believe they will because any time we can save money um, in debt service, then I would, I would assume that they would do it because it's a good deal. And then from there it would come back to the city for then the bond refunding it would go through the entire process. So um, this would give us authorization to move forward. The next item on the agenda is, is related to this. I can explain it thereafter. So I'm going to have Mr. Levin step up and he can uh, start with the first uh, presentation and, and then we can answer any questions you have at thereafter. Thank you, sir. I'm Madam Mayor and rest of council. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Bud Levine. I'm with Wolf Hansen and Company. We're a municipal advisory investment banking firm, one of the few in California that are still independent and, and employee-owned, uh, located in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I've been in the business for almost 45 years, and uh, as uh, uh, Ron uh, uh, pointed out, we've been through an extremely low interest rate period. 
uh, longer than anything I've witnessed. I went through the period where the rates were the highest they've ever been in, in history, and now we're going through the period where they've been the lowest in history over a very long period of time. But that period may be coming to an end, and uh, uh, if, if this is an opportunity for the city to still take advantage of those uh, those uh, uh, savings and, and interest rates and produce uh, meaningful savings for the uh, uh, for the uh, for the city and for the other agencies that are involved. Uh, basically, as uh, uh, Ron pointed out, uh, you have two bonds. You have the 2005 uh, COPs uh, and you have the 2010 uh, RDA bonds. The 2005 bonds can be refunded right now, and the way refunding works is that every time a municipal bond is issued, there are call provisions that are involved in the covenants of those bonds. Call provisions mean the period of time that the bonds have to stay outstanding before they can be paid off. Uh, in the case of the 2005 COPs, they are currently refundable, which means that they can now be refunded if there are savings that can be demonstrated. The 2010 bonds are not callable until 2020. However, in the municipal bond business, there's an opportunity to do something called an advance refunding, which means that you would issue new bonds, you would escrow the funds necessary to pay the old bonds until the call date, and then on the call date, those bonds would be retired, and you would go forward with the new bonds, excuse me, the new bonds at the lower interest. And that's the way we structured the proposed refunding when we first started working with the city on this. The new tax bill that was recently passed had several provisions that were not directly related to taxes. They had to do with certain other items that were provided uh, by the federal government that allowed uh, 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 a, a, a tax relief. One of those is the ability of cities to issue the advance refundings because it allows you to lock in interest rates before the call date and take advantage of that before they go up. Under the new tax bill, advance refundings have been prohibited. So as we stand here right now, the 2010 bonds cannot be refunded on a tax-exempt basis. However, the interest rate differential between the current bonds existing bonds and the new refunding bonds that we would issue is still substantial enough that it produces very, very uh, good savings. And I'll point that out in just a, in, in just a minute. Um, so we would go ahead with that on a taxable basis. However, there are opportunities in the, in the, in the field right now. There's a type of bond called a Cinderella bond. A Cinderella bond is a bond like Cinderella. At midnight, her carriage turns into a pumpkin. The bonds are issued initially at the taxable rate for the period of time until the call date. And at the call date, they then switch to the tax exempt rate, which would then be allowable. That increases the savings. So there's two approaches that we're going to take, both of which will produce very, very adequate savings. Uh, the first one is using taxable bonds for the 2010 refunding part of the, of the new bonds, and the second one using the Cinderella taxable to then be uh, uh, a switch to a tax exempt. Um, the, uh, do you have written uh, the, the – you, did you pass out copies of these also uh, to them? The, uh, the first analysis, the savings analysis we want to go through is the taxable one. This is the most conservative because we know we can do this um, um, you, as soon as the refunding is allowed to go forward. Yeah, you want the green one, the green one with the taxable. Uh, 
Um, the first slide uh, simply shows what the new bond issue would look like. So if you look at the one on the right, the combined series A and B, you can see that uh, the, the uh, par amount of the bonds, these are the, the new bonds that would be approved and issued, would be 29245000 There's an existing reserve fund that can be brought, that secures the old bonds that by law has to be brought into the refunding. So that would be brought in to help pay for the new bonds. So you would have a total sources of funds of 33 million. The bonds would be issued for 29 million 245. These are all estimates. Uh, uh, we, the actual amounts will be determined when the bonds are actually sold, and I'll go through that process in a minute. So you'd have 33 million. 4,966 is the cash deposit to do the current refunding of the 2005 bonds. The 27,748 would be the deposit made into the escrow to pay the 2010 bonds until the call date of June of 2020, at which time the bonds would be completely paid off. And 315000 is the combined cost of issuance. That's the cost of the placement agent, municipal advisor, bond council, trustee, and fiscal consultant. All of these uh, 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 costs are contingent upon the successful placing of the bonds and closing of the bonds. So there is no out-of-pocket exposure to the city in the event the bonds are not sold and closed. Uh, there is a the, one of the uh, uh, fees, the fiscal consultant who does the analysis of the taxes available to uh, property taxes available to pay the bonds. They, uh, under their normal operating procedures, do not fully have their fee contingent. In the event the bonds are not issued, their fee, part of their fee, uh, may be paid by the, uh, by the ROPs and uh, that still does not come out of the uh, city's share of any of, 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 any of the uh, uh, tax money. Uh, we're anticipating that the sale date will be May 1st, and I'll get into that in a, in a minute. If you look at the next slide, um, this is the existing debt service on the two bonds that we're talking about. On the left side is the debt service for the 2005 COPs. Now, the, the, the 2005 COPs are secured by a reimbursement agreement between the city and the RDA uh, and therefore is not paid by city funds but is also paid by your uh, ROPs, uh, your, your, uh, your tax money that comes in uh, as a result of the tax increment. If you look at the third column over, that's the total debt service that is paid um, uh, for the uh, 2005 COPs. And if you look down at the bottom, the total, you'll see that over the remaining life of the COPs, you would pay $5,971,000. That would assume that you did not go forward and you kept things as they are. That's the amount that uh, would be paid on, on, uh, on that particular bond. The next three columns over are the uh, payments for the 2010 existing bonds. Same situation. You have the principal column, you have the interest column, and the debt service is the combined payment that is made every year. Notice the total there is $43,355,000. The last column over, total debt service, gives you the combined debt service that the existing bonds are paying. That's a total of $49,326,000. These are not estimates. These are the actual obligated payments that currently exist on these bonds. If we look at the next, uh, at the next uh, slide, this is the proposed debt service for the taxable structure that I talked about a few minutes ago. This would assume a tax exempt part of for the Series A, because those qualify for tax exempt. That's a current refunding and not an advanced refunding. And the Series B would be the taxable. Take a look at the debt service now 
on the, the, the new estimated uh, uh, debt service. So you can see that the Series A, their total debt, that total debt service would be 4941 compared to the 5.9 million. The, uh, the sixth column over, which is the full debt service for the, for the uh, 2010, would be 37 million. And if you look at the last column, the total debt service is 42 million versus the 49 million. The next slide shows the debt service savings. This is the significant slide to look at because it shows you the net result of what would happen with the refunding of these two issues. And I think to cut to the chase, if we go over to the debt service savings cash flow, you can see that, and that's the one that's the first column highlighted in, in yellow, you can see the annual savings that would be existing for the RDA group at, in total, or starting at 451000 ending in 243000 in the last year, total savings of 7264000 The next three columns are required disclosure items, which shows the net present value of those savings. That tells you what these savings over the 19 years that they will be produced, what they represent in today's dollars. So today, that's seven million two. If it were paid today instead of over a 19-year period at various interest rates, would be four million seven twenty-four. To say this in a different way, if you were to invest four million seven hundred twenty-four thousand today and wait 19 years and receive the interest rate that these new bonds would be paying, you'd end up with $7,264,000. Uh, uh, this is a requirement that the Department of Finance and all the regulatory agencies require is always shown in any, in any uh, refunding. Now, the next, the next uh, a slide takes those savings and shows you how each of the agencies that are in the area are going to benefit from this refunding. I need to point out something that I should have said a little earlier, and that is, even though the city only represents, in, in, and you'll see in a second with this chart, a small percentage of the total of the savings that are going to be generated, the city is the only entity that can propose and complete a refunding. None of the other agencies have the ability to do that. If you decide not to do this, then none of these benefits that go to the other agencies will occur as well as to the city. So you're the only one that can, the city is the only one that can bring a refunding forward once an RDA issue or now a successor agency issue uh, is in existence. If you'll notice the two highlighted uh, 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 columns, the uh, darker, the uh, lighter blue on the right is the city of Ridgecrest. You notice that the city of Ridgecrest gets 7.8% of the savings that are being generated on a yearly basis. So when we talked about that 451000 which was the first year's savings resulting from the refunding, you can see that the city will benefit in their general fund 35000 And that you can read down that column. And it over the life of the issue, it would be around 570000 would be the benefit to the city. The other highlighted column, and I might add your city manager did a very nice job uh, discussing this with the uh, county. Uh, as you know, you have fire services that are contracted out with the county, and you have a contract with them, and you're paying so much a year. I believe it's around 250, if I'm not mistaken, around 250,000 a year. What has been discussed with the county, and apparently the county has, has indicated that they would be willing to do this, since the city is the only one that can bring this refunding uh, uh, and complete it, they would be willing to take a look at their participation in the, in the savings and apply that 
to the obligation that the city has under their fire contract and renegotiate the contract. Uh, that's not been completely decided yet, but it's under discussion, and they've indicated that they would be uh, willing to, uh, uh, to entertain and to do that. So you can see that that would be another 822000 that would benefit the city if that, in fact, is accomplished, bringing the total of around a million three to the city general fund or benefit to the general fund uh, for doing this. The last page is a lot of bond speak and is a required uh, presentation of the same numbers I just went over but in a more formalized uh, bond, uh, bond uh, representation of showing the results of the refunding of both the 2005 on a tax exempt basis and the 2010 on a taxable basis. And uh, some of the same numbers are in here, only presented slightly differently. The uh, top part of the where it ta talks about the refunding bonds, that shows what the escrow requirement is. You're going to be approving two escrow agreements today, if you do. One is for the escrowing the funds from the new sale of the bonds into the 2005 refunding escrow, and the other is for the 2010 refunding escrow. Those are the same numbers that I showed on the first slide. Um, the estimated cost of issuance, you know we had a total of 315000 You can see that's broken out by 50000 um, in the uh, in the 2005 and 265,000 in the uh, in the 2010 and uh, and and so forth. We we have something showing arbitrage yield, true interest cost, all in true interest cost. The number to look at at that example is the all in total interest cost. Why they even show the others, I'm not sure, but it's a, again a legal requirement. The real important one is the all-in two interest cost because that's the interest cost on the bonds plus all the costs that have been involved uh, in in the issuance and then presented in 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 increasing the average interest rate that your bonds sold for to show what the true cost to the issuing entity is. So as you can see in the two th in the 2005, that number is a 3.75 percent. And in the case of the taxable 2010, it's a 4.74 percent. It should be noted that in the 2005 issue, where we're talking about 3.79, your current bonds, that equivalent amount is 4.50 percent. And in the case of the 2010 bonds, where we're showing the 4.74, that is a 6.25 percent. So you can see that there are significant uh, savings here, which are reflected in the actual dollars. Um, that is the situation with the, with the taxable one. Do we have the other one? Yeah, go ahead. Ah, good, okay. Ah, okay. Now, I talked to you a little bit about the Cinderella bonds, so I'm not going to go through the whole presentation, just hit the highlights to show you the difference. The 2005 will still be done on a tax exempt basis. Their numbers, the numbers for the 2005 are exactly the same as they were in the previous slide uh, presentation. However, in the 2010, um, and the amounts, by the way, are exactly the same because we have to raise the same amount of money to pay off both, both issues. So if we go to the existing bonds, that's the same debt service that we had uh, in the previous presentation because the existing bonds don't change just because the refunding bonds do. That's still the existing uh, uh, debt service. Now let's go to the new debt service. So now we can see that the new debt service on the um, on the uh, uh, these bonds, and again, the 2010 bonds will be issued for the first two years at a taxable rate. And down at the bottom of the presentation on the left-hand side, you can see that the average coupon on that bond will be about a 3.83%. It was 4.64 on the other taxable uh, issue. And therefore, the total debt service, you'll notice, is now 39930 instead of 42000 which was on the other, in the other issue. 
if you go to the next one, which gets to our uh, debt service savings page, that's where the real difference exists. Because of the lower debt service on the 2010, using the Cinderella structure where the first two years is taxable and then it switches to tax exempt, um, you can see that the, that the debt service uh, uh, savings now, this, the first year stays <laughs> roughly the same because remember, we're taxable against taxable in the first two years. Then we start showing an increase uh, starting in 2019, where instead of being 451,000, it's now 584,000. And your total, instead of being 7 million two, is now 9 million 395. So um, that's a significant difference. We're very hopeful that this thing moves forward, that the Cinderella structure will still be available uh, when these bonds will come uh, to the market and that we would be able to do this on a taxable for the first two years and tax exempt. However, you have to be prepared for the fact that in worst case, we would be doing the previous, which still shows very good savings. If you look at the next slide, which is now where we get back to the individual agencies and how they're going to participate. Let's look at the city of Ridgecrest. Now the city of Ridgecrest is getting uh, 45,000, 46,000, 48,000 on their own uh, distribution. Uh, first year being a partial year in 2018 of, of only 35,000, but the rest of the years you can see are in the 40s. Total is 736 instead of the 540,000 uh, in the previous. And also from the county fire fund, the amount that could be credited to the obligation of the city for their fire service contract now increases to a million sixty-three. So the combined uh, uh, benefit uh, is estimated at around a million seven for the for the city. And the last the last uh, page again is the is the uh, bond statistics, which I won't go through again unless there are any questions. And I might ask now, are there any questions on the PowerPoint presentation? I will go through the documents and the next steps in, in next. I, I have a question sure. on the uh, escrowing. Sure. So basically we would still have the 2010s, but then we'd also have these. Now, is the right. interest in escrow offset the Absolutely. cost? Absolutely. It's a great question. And by the way, you just hit to the heart of why the tax, new tax bill decided to include not allowing advanced refundings anymore because they feel that they're giving double tax break in effect to the bondholders of both issues. That was one of the arguments for that. Answer to your question is yes, when the new bonds are sold, they're sold for a sufficient amount that will put into escrow the amount that will be due on the call date to pay off the principal of the bonds, plus all the interest that needs to be paid between now and that date. So there would be an escrow amount that would pay the full debt service on the 2010 bonds from the day the new bonds close until the day um, uh, June of, of, uh, of uh, 2020 when the old bonds will be paid off. And when we're looking at the savings numbers, we include all the costs of having that structure in place. If that structure in place didn't produce savings, then you wouldn't do it. This produces very, very strong savings. Okay, I'm, I'm still a little confused sure. here. So the new bonds are the principal plus two years of interest. No, no, the, yeah, no. The new bonds are sold uh, in an amount that will provide enough money to pay off the 2005 bonds and their escrow, right. which is simply putting the principal amount that's due now to pay it off. In addition, there will be enough money in the sale of the new bonds to make a deposit into the second escrow, which will be the principal amount of that bond, those bonds to be paid off on the call date, and all the interest that needs to be paid out on those bonds to the holders of the bonds between now and when that bond is actually called. So there'll be no more obligation for the tax money to pay the 2010 bonds. It will be paid in the refunding. 
It will be paid by the money that has been raised in selling the, the, the new bonds. But but we don't get any, <clears throat> excuse me we don't get any interest on the escrow. Uh, the sure, there's just... interest on the escrow. Okay. In fact, that is also a very sophisticated question because and I didn't go into that detail. But the reality is when the escrow they, it's called sizing the escrow. When the escrow is sized, they, we know how much money is going to go into the escrow from the sale of the bond, of the new bonds. So before we determine the amount that ne is needed to be raised by the new bonds. We figure out uh, how much earnings could be generated by the escrow for those two years. And we preset, we, we, we have the trustee invest in government securities that will provide a return on that money that's sitting in escrow until the call date. So that's all factored in. It's a very sophisticated question, by the way. Eddie, did you have any? I've got a couple. Sure. Um, can this, any of these items be called early? Can the rules change and they say we want it all paid off now? No. When you, are you talking about the new bonds that are going yes. to be issued? Yeah. When the new bonds are issued, there are covenants included in the new bonds, and they cannot be changed. So before those bonds are sold, it's determined when the bonds are going to be called. Now, the normal in the marketplace is a 10-year call at par, which means if we issue bonds in 2018 and they're going to mature in 2037, which is the case of the new bonds, they would be callable in 2028. So for the first 10 years, the investor is entitled to be assured that he's going to get the return that he's invested in. Beginning in 2028, if interest rates again drop and they're lower compared to the uh, interest rates on the 2018 bonds, you could do a refunding again. That was my second question. Okay. I wanted to know if we could redo it. Yes. When I read this, uh, I didn't have this information. I had what was in our packet, which yes. was significantly more difficult to read. I, I, I understand. And, um, that's why I, I'm here. I read through it thinking there is no downside. I mean, why would we not want to do this? And well, I, I, I couldn't find I, anything. I can tell you I do a lot of these, and I've gone to a lot of city councils. And I can tell you that there are city councils that, let's say, we know that the city, Ridgecrest, has 7.8%. I just recently did a, 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 a refunding with the city of Coalinga. They get 22 percent of their of, of that. I've done one with a city with 12. I've done one with the city with three. Now, sometimes when you get so low in the percentage that the city is going to get, the cities might take the position that look, we've got staff people that have to uh, spend their time working on this. It just isn't worth it for the low amount of money that we're going to get, and they might decide. Even though it's going to hurt the school system, even though it's going to hurt some of the other agencies that are going to benefit from this refunding, they would take the position that it just uh, we're, we're, we're overburdened with work at the city and we're not going to move forward with it. Most cities will do it either because they're getting enough of a percentage so it's significant for their general fund or because they feel it helps the community enough that it's worthwhile doing. And by the way, I didn't point out one thing that in the um, uh, in the uh, cost of issuance on issuing the 2018 bonds, there's a $35,000 admin fee that is going to be paid to the city's general fund at the close. It's a one-time fee, uh, in addition to the benefit of the of the yearly savings that's going to be paid to the uh, city to cover the staff time and the effort of going through uh, uh, the refunding. Since you are the only one that can do that, um, that's, uh, uh, that's included. Can we use, because I know you've negotiated with Kern County on the fire fund, can we use any of these as negotiating, I'm going to use the word principles, um, with the other agencies because there are significant dollars that benefit these other agencies. Can we offset one with the other? I, I love counsel people who really think these things through. That's a very good question. And the answer is 
that certainly could be on the table. I'm not in a position to recommend that you do that, but that is something that's very smart that, that, uh, that uh, certainly could be looked at. And has, I've seen it done in the past. Was it a significant benefit to the city? Where, uh, no, what, 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 when this has usually come up is when the city is getting a small percentage and everybody else is getting a bigger percentage. Which there's is what a we discussion are. that maybe there's, there could be a sharing arrangement. Again, I'd yield to the, uh, to both Bond Council and your city council on, on that about, uh, you know, how you would go about that. But uh, I don't think there's anything in the law that I know of that would prevent that type of discussion. Now, I may have a misunderstanding of, sure. of school district monies, but I understand the state kind of plays with that. So is the Sierra Sands really going to get this much benefit, or is the state going to cut their other funds? Well, the, look, you're talking to somebody who's lived through this, too. Uh, and, and, and we know that the state can come in. Look, uh, before the state decided to do away with RDAs, uh, the RDAs were operating on the basis of which they did, and suddenly the state decided that they felt that they could have the money available to schools or available for other purposes, and they did away with, uh, with RDAs. State could do whatever they're going to do, but as it stands right now and the way that it has been operating for uh, even throughout all the changes uh, in the RDA laws, this money, if there are savings that are generated and they they, they float down to the uh, extra revenue, which they will. Uh, each of those agencies, the schools as well, will get their share, as, as stated there. Can the state come in at a later time and change the laws? They can. but They do it all the time. And they do, yeah. <laughs> at times. Well, Lindsay? Can we just ask one? Um, Mr. Strand? Originally, a few years ago, it's been a few years ago, uh, I served on the Oversight Committee. Do we still have an Oversight Committee? Yes, they are, they are scheduled to meet on January 22nd, and this matter will be brought before them on that date. We have to get the agenda to them uh, by Friday, get it publicized. Okay. Now, just keep in mind that the oversight in June of this year is going to be transferred to the county. Yes. And the local cities are going to only have one representative on that committee thereafter until everything's resolved. Uh, I believe that the cities have chosen the finance director from the city of Bakersfield to represent the entities. So a lot of this control we have right now making this decision, we can make it within the city, within the oversight board that's selected within our community. But after June, we're going to be dealing with an oversight board that's controlled by the county primarily and the other tax and entities. But at this point in time, we control the decision and we control what happens. We control whether or not to refinance in any regard. I mean, even if even once the successor agency is taken over by uh, the county, we still are the only ones that can refund the bonds. Okay. Subject to the approval of the Department correct. of Finance, yeah, correct. and as Ron pointed out, uh, the Department of Finance really is concerned mainly that the bonds are legally issued, uh, and you, that's why you have bond counsel that makes sure that all the documents are prepared properly, and that there are, in fact, savings. The interesting thing about the, the Department of Finance rules is that they never, ever really came up with a definition of a minimum savings that would be required. So technically, you could come in there with a $30 million issue and say there's 100000 in savings, and it would meet their parameters. Now, I don't think they would necessarily approve that, but legally, they uh, – so. but they mainly focus on savings and making sure that they're – uh, that the legal requirements are done. And they always prefer um, uh, refundings that do not extend the term. There are many municipal advisors that will come to cities and figure out how to generate savings on a yearly basis by extending out the term so that you take the principal amount and you pay it off over a slower period of time, thus enhancing the yearly savings, but in the long run paying more interest because your bond's going out longer. So I always advocate that you keep the, the term, in which is the case here, we're not extending term at all. 
uh, the, the new bonds are the same terms as the old bonds. Can I ask nothing? Please. Now, the, co the estimated cost of doing this is $315,000. Right. So theoretically, the state would not approve something that's going to save us 100000 because it's going to cost us three fifteen. dollars Well, yeah, it, it, exactly. So, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't bring something to the state, to the DOF, where that would be the case. The but this, this $315,000 is spread throughout the whole thing, right? It's yes. The, the city of Ridgecrest doesn't pay this three hundred fifteen. dollars No, 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 no. That comes out of the proceeds of the bonds. Okay. So it's all paid by the end. And as I pointed out earlier, the only one that is not contingent upon the sale of the bonds is, that, is part of the fiscal consultants, you know, the third, which, by the, the way, you have down. him under contract for other services, too. Um, I didn't have a question, but I just wanted to add a comment. I wanted to just say thank you to Mr. Strand, because when Wallace and I had gone to the League of California Cities annual meeting, we actually had a couple different consultants approach us saying that they had looked at our bonds and that they could save us a significant amount of money. So I brought that back to Mr. Strand, and so he took the initiative to find someone to look into that more so that we could save this money. And so I just think that's a really good thing and that we finally got it done. And it probably could have done been done ways back, but... Now, what, what is the time frame on how long this Okay, the good, good question. That's, that's the next thing I was going to discuss. Um, the schedule that we're looking at right now would be that you're, you approve tonight on, uh, on uh, the 22nd, the oversight board would approve. We will get a package out to the DOF within days of the oversight board approval. The oversight board has, by law, 65 days to respond. Now, I've done quite a few of these over the last couple of years. The oversight board, uh, the uh, DOF, um, um, in the early days of when the successor agencies uh, came on the scene at the end of the RDA, would take the full 65 days and then some and ask a million questions. They're much more efficient now, and I've had them approved in 10 days. Uh, the last one I did took 30 days, but you never know. You could get an, an analyst that's busy or that has some question that, that takes some time to respond to. Uh, and it could take the full 65 days. So worst case, if we get it out to uh, the DOF by the end of next week, so let's say that kills January, we would have February and March, and in early April, we would get the approval from the, from the DOF. Once we get approval, then the placement agent, Hilltop Securities, would put together a request for proposals called an RFP that would be sent out to maybe 20 or 25 different private placement banks throughout the country. They would be given two weeks to respond, so that puts us into the middle of, of April. Once they respond, a decision can be made very quickly. We'll do the analysis, we'll discuss it with staff, make sure we pick the right buyer, and then we will select a buyer. That buyer then has another week to 10 days to finalize all their last minute uh, diligence and get their final approval, and then they're ready to sign a bond purchase agreement, which they would do. That would put us near the end of April, and then it usually takes another week to 10 days to do all the documents for the close, and you would close, let's say, anywhere from May 1st to May 15th. That would be the slowest that it would be. And the key dates that we would be concerned about and that you would be concerned about is when do you get a rate lock? When do you have a sale on the new bonds where you know for sure what the rate of interest is going to be? And that, in my scenario that I just talked about, that would be towards the middle, middle to the end of April. If we get a response from the DOF within 10 or 15 days, everything will move up about a month. And then we could maybe be pricing in March with the close in early to mid-April. So that, that would be the procedure. Is there any and other any question on, on any of the documents uh, that are other than the escrow? Oh. Okay. Um, are you ready to open it up to public comment, or are you? Sure, that's your choice. I'm here okay. to answer questions. Sure. Is there any public who'd like to make a comment? No, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Or, or I see to allow. Sure. Yeah. Okay. 
My questions are all simple. So. <laughs> Um, we've, we've talked on multiple occasions of trying to renegotiate um, the, our share of the um, property tax with the county. Um, if we're able to do that, does that impact the payout um, that is listed up here on, on, on this sheet that I have? That, yeah, I would assume that, that if you were to, to uh, uh, renegotiate the percentages so that your percentage was higher than 7.8%, you're going to get whatever percentage is agreed upon to be distributed. Um, and, and the answer would be yes if you got that increased. Okay, and is that correlated to our normal property tax distribution? That is, this, is this the same? It looks very similar, if not identical. It is. Okay. And I, I would like to encourage the council and the staff to uh, take up the, the question that the mayor posed about trying to renegotiate with maybe some of the other big uh, beneficiaries of this. Uh, it looks like Sierra Sands and the ERAF, uh, which is another education thing, I believe, uh, are going to be the big benefactors. So if we could do something there, anything, uh, it certainly would be beneficial. It's at least worth asking the question, I, I guess. Um, and, I, I, and uh, Let me just interrupt you for one quick sec. Um, I don't, I'm, again, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a bond counsel, but I believe the ERAF would be something you could not negotiate. I think that's a state required uh, 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 payment, how, uh, you know, percentage. However, the other agencies, if they're going to benefit to the extent they are from this refunding, that that's something you could that could oh. be talked. Yeah, and Sierra Sands obviously is the big one. Um, okay, and and last but not least, um, uh, I'd like to echo the thoughts of uh, Miss Stevens. Um, I have been known on an occasion or two to hassle, or at least presumably, be unkind to our city manager. Uh, not intentionally. Uh, I like to think that I'm honest and just forthright, but I do want to thank him uh, for showing the initiative to going on and, and, and doing this and saving the city some money. This is the type of thing that we need to do on a continuing basis, looking at all of our payments to get more money for the city. So I commend both the city manager and the council for doing this. Thank you. Uh, Steve Matthews here. I think I've got it figured out, but I just want to make sure. On this escrow fund, the new bond, I've got, I, I understand that the new bonds would be put into an escrow fund to pay off the old bonds plus the interest that would go to the old bonds. So we are not paying any more interest on that, but we are paying interest on the new bonds, correct? Correct. Okay. Actually, the proceeds from the sale thought, of the new bonds okay. I thought that's, are I put into the escrow. Okay, the thank new you. bonds now stand are outstanding, but you're paying much lower interest right. on those bonds than you were previously paying on the bonds that are being refunded. And the city doesn't pay that. That comes from the yeah. tax increment. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other? I see. Thank you. Ron Porter, just one very simple question. Uh, once this is all done, does he have to reapprove this, or the approval goes from this day forward? I'm sorry. See, I'm, if, see, if they approve it tonight, does it go? Do they have to come back for another approval later? No, or? Well, they, they're, that's an inter that's a that's an interesting question. If if the everything moves forward on, we were talking about the private placement to institutional banks. If that is the way that this is ultimately sold, which I believe it will be, there's no need to come back to the to the council uh, a successor agency for any more approval. 
this particular resolution gives authority to members of the council and staff to make the final decision and execute all required documents. If for some reason, uh, let's say that in the private banks, uh, or not private banks, banks, decide that they don't want to buy municipals anymore, and that market is not there in April or May or March when we're going forward, then it would be done as what is called a public offering, whereby a underwriter would come in and underwrite the bonds and sell to the public. Then something called an official statement would have to be prepared, a full disclosure document and official statement to sell the bonds. If that's required, then we would have to have a subsequent meeting with the council to approve that document and have it in a publicly disclosed uh, a document as you always do with the public offering. But assuming that that is not required uh, because of the private placement, there's, there would be no need because these documents that are being approved tonight are the documents that would be used in the private placement. I want to go a little further on that question, sure. though. We approve this tonight. Yes. And this is all based on an estimated interest. Yes. And if we go out and we find out it's going to be a higher rate, so we're not going to realize as much savings, wouldn't that have to come back to us for a final decision? No, because you, I mean, today you're giving the approval to the members that are on the, on the resolution to make that decision. That once the DOF approves it, then you go to market. If there's not significant savings, then you decide not to, to, to move ahead. They can make that same decision not to move ahead. Who makes that decision? That would be on, on the, on, I, be, I believe uh, there's three or four that are authorized under the resolution. But as Mike said, if the amount is, doesn't reflect the savings we think, mm -hmm. or it may even be greater, I can understand the greater, and I don't plan on greater. Right, right. But if it's not what we think, it doesn't come back to us? Uh, it doesn't have to. If you want to make that a requirement, that you can make that a requirement. That slows the process down. But it, if, you, if you need to do that, or if, if you want to, you know, um, that's, that, again, yeah. that's, that's your decision. But, 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 it's possible that it could be worse than what we got now or not? Never, no. Well, it would not be approved by the DOF okay. if there's not yeah. significant savings. Yeah, well, but, but the, what we got, uh, I don't know why we have to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what, well, what I'm either. saying is as long yeah. as there are, look, it, 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 there's a possibility. Let's just look at it from a realistic point of view. Interest rates can go up. We've seen that. So let's say, let's use an example. If interest rates, instead of being at the 350 and the four and a quarter that we're estimating, end up going up to 4% and four and a half, that would be one of the biggest moves probably uh, in an awfully long time. Your savings still would probably be in the 3 million to 4 million range instead of the 9 million. Um, if you want to put a level at which uh, uh, you would not want to move forward. Problem with that is yeah, we can't go to the DOF unless we're going to them with a definitive that. proposal to to approve. Hmm? And that's the way all agencies in the state of California have done this. Thank you. Now, Madam Mayor, if, if it turns out that the interest rates go up <laughs> extremely high and something significant occurs, I'll obviously bring it back. And I, you know, I'd be happy to, to right. make another presentation at that point. Right. Uh, and you could give guidelines. There's nothing to prevent you from having another meeting and giving guidelines to uh, the staff that's going to be making that decision. And I could come and, and make that presentation at that time once we have the uh, a, a proposal. I mean, we will know um, ahead of time where we sit at. I can obviously Absolutely. send out. A, a global email to city council saying, hey, FYI, everything's great. This is our estimations with, you know, not violating the Brown Act, just to give you, an, you know, an advisal uh, email. Uh, if there's anything out of sorts, we can always, you know, call a meeting. But we also have to be cautious that if we're ready to go and we're three weeks out from the next meeting, i got to wait three weeks just to come tell you everything's great, then we may we may miss some additional marks because, I mean, we were well, looking I, at we we're looking at some additional uh, benefits before the the Trump tax cuts. It was much more advantageous. I have a suggestion. Uh, if you remember when I went through the procedures that we're going to be going through in 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 moving this forward, 
uh, there's going to be an RFP that's going to be sent out, and the banks are going to make proposals. We probably will get, with a credit like this and the size of this issue, I'm sure we're going to get five, six, seven, eight proposals, all various different kinds of rates, different covenants. Um, we then have a period of time before that proposal is accepted. That's something that if you wanted to have a finance committee or something like that, that would then review that before the, uh, uh, the uh, bank that's the proposal is selected. There's nothing wrong with doing that. That's a seven to ten days? Right. And that, but that can be set by us. In other words, we don't, we don't have to respond in two days. I can have in the RFP that we have a week to ten days or whatever to respond. What is the uh, potential harm in putting a time frame on it? The fact that some of the banks might not offer as good a proposal because they're going to worry about what's going to happen to interest rates. That's what I would do if I were proposing. I would say, okay, I really would propose three and a half if I know I'm going to hear in a couple of days. But if I'm going to hear in a week, maybe I better put 375. So it's not going to be huge, but it, it, it could be a little different. Over time, but, it would be significant. Right, right. Well, I'm, I'm not concerned about it coming back as long as it fits in the criteria yes. that was used. It's if it's above that to significantly, then I think the council needs to look at it, or at least the Correct. finance committee of the council. Correct. So. Well, I think what you could do, I think what I would suggest is you get the approval to move ahead. Once you get the approval to move ahead, you don't have to move ahead. You get the approval from the DOF. Now it's totally up to the successor agency now to go ahead and pull the trigger and, 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 and do the refunding. So if you want to have dialogue that goes on during that period and establish what the minimum savings that have to be accomplished, uh, to, that could be a guideline for the decision makers to, uh, uh, to use. Well, I, I think the savings is significant to the city, number one. Yes. But I'd hate to be the one to not allow Sierra Sands, for example, to right. benefit greatly. So. Right. So is there any other? Are you? Are no. your question answered, Ron? No, I have no some other two more questions. <laughs> Was but he just remind me one. Um, you said that the decision makers, and I'm assuming in your body somewhere, those are decision makers that are looking out for our benefit, correct? Correct. Okay, that's. Yeah, I mean, these are people that know they're looking out for and our by benefit. By the way, I, you know, I'm an advisor. I, as a municipal advisor, <coughs> I'm different than an underwriter and a placement agent. My fiduciary responsibility is to recommend to the city what's best for the city. Right, you're looking out for our benefit. Absolutely. And the, and the other one is just because no one asked it. Is there any negative possibilities here? Um, I can't think of any, but I just want to ask. Ignoring the opportunity to, <laughs> to save money is the only negative. Okay. Moving ahead with it, no. All right, thank the you. Only, the only negative moving ahead is if for some reason it couldn't happen, we'd have that small fee we'd have to pay. But I guess you said that. Yeah, but that wrong. my understanding is, and, and this I have not gotten complete verification of this because I was told this by the fiscal consultants on several uh, instances, which never materialized, so it was never tested, is that it is an allowable item on your ROPS, so should be paid by the uh, taxes coming in. But again, I've never seen that actually in action, uh, but uh, no, I'm told that it, that it should be accepted. So we get nothing we can blame Mr. Strand on, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, no more public comment. Any other council comment? Okay, motion. I move approval. Second. Both, please. The little the board's not up there. Yeah. There it goes. Should we do it again then? Yeah. It's received one. It just hasn't put in the, the box yet. I've done mine twice. Does that mean two yeses? Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's showing up. So it looks as if we might have uh, an issue still with the incorporation of the PowerPoint. There you go. Oh, there Is we we're go. going? There we go. Anybody, any, everybody got any shit? It says it's 505. <laughs> yeah, it's no. just taking no, a while to. It's just taking time for the show. Well, it's the first time I've gotten a 7 0 vote on an oh. issue with the five <laughs> <laughs> From five people. Right? We have five, uh, five yeses. Uh, motion carries. Okay. 
Thank I know you I'm not. So thank you. Much. Thank you, sir. My we pleasure. Pleasure that. being here. Yep, but hold on. We got one more. Oh, sure. Oh, one more. Yeah, the next one. Yeah. I know I'm not supposed to speak at this moment, but when I watch this at home, I can't read the voting, so if they could make that bigger, it would be great. I can't. We did. It was smaller, we, but we did increase it for this one. Okay, but I'm just saying you can't see it at home. But she announces the vote. She doesn't usually. Well, just the yes, total, but she doesn't say who voted what, so I mean. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. At home, you can't see that. I just want to let you know. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I thought well, we had enlarged it. Big enough. But when she says it's five eyes, you know who voted aye. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Okay. The next item is item number eight. Approve uh, the form and authorize the execution and delivery of an escrow agreement relating to the repayment of the reimbursement agreement dated on November 1st, 2005 by and between the former Ridgecrest Redevelopment Agency and the city which supported the city of Ridgecrest 2005 refunding certificates of participation, City of Ridgecrest Civic Center project, and providing for other matters related thereto. Mr. Strand. Yes, go ahead, Please. Buzz. The, the reason this is on separately is this particular resolution is something you're voting on as a city and not as a successor agency because the city was a party to the reimbursement agreement. And, uh, and so anyway, that just wanted to clarify that, that's the, uh, that that is the action you're taking as the city council and not as a successor agency. From a legal point, that's an important distinction. Is that the only city. difference? Yes. Otherwise, it would have been if the, if, the, if the city wasn't a party to that agreement directly, that would have been included in the original resolution with the successor agency. Is there any discussion from council? Any public comment? Okay. Motion? I move approval of eight. Second. Oh. I'm, I saw an error come up, so he, he cleared it, but that might be what's happening there, so there's okay, the go ahead now. I appreciate everyone's patience with this while we work through technicalities here totally didn't like it well it worked at the beginning and then it started doing it again after the PowerPoint presentation so we've obviously got a glitch in there with the PowerPoints that we've got to work out so why don't again, we just I, vote it's coming up I oh it is okay. yeah slowly but it's doing it I think we'll need to work some more on the PowerPoint oh, sure. issue. Do we need to do it again if our boxes don't show up? Yes, there's only two of Eddie, Mike, and Peggy haven't voted yet. It says, I have. But I need I have. To push your this buttons, is my so. second one. My third. There oh, we there go. There we go. Eddie just doesn't ever get a white box. Yeah. Two of them light up when you press the button. You just don't light up. Yeah. It says five or five. So. Yeah, but we don't know which way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Motion yeah. second, five, five or against it. Yeah, you don't. How come we don't have a box yet? Right? I think it's the remote. One. Can't be the operator. Here. Here. Let oh, me Lord. just go ahead and call the <laughs> roll, roll call vote. Mr. Maurer. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Mayor Breeden. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. There it goes. Oh. Ms. Stevens, aye. five eyes motion carries. Okay, the next Modern item. conveniences. Yeah. Uh, item nine, proposed action to approve a resolution to approve an agreement with Wildan Financial Services for a cost of $28,750 in establishing a park assessment district. Mr. Strand. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of City Council, as you recall, on December 20th, uh, your board approved a resolution uh, authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with SCI Consulting to assist in establishing a um, park assessment district. Uh, in that agreement, there was the understanding that um, the, the consultant would do a, an initial portion of work, basically to determine whether or not 
the assessment was feasible or not, and then we'd come back to council for the final decision to move forward. Prior to signing that agreement, um, I had received a um, proposal from Wildam, which was uh, one of two other entities that we had uh, requested a proposal from. Um, the amount of the proposal uh, was similar in nature to that of SCI, but was substantially uh, cheaper in the sense that SCI was 92500 and Will Dam was 28750 Now, the primary difference between the two proposals was is that there was no community outreach component in Will Dan's as there was in SCI. Uh, SCI was charging uh, approximately $9,800 for the outreach. So even taking into account the missing outreach portion, it was still substantially um, less. Uh, so the following week, uh, Mr. Patton and I spoke with uh, representatives from Wildan and fairly came to the conclusion that they were basically the same as SCI in their ability to put together the Park Assessment District. Uh, so we held off on signing the agreement. I notified SCI of the issue. Um, and now I'm bringing this to you uh, to switch consultants to continue um, moving forward in this matter. Now I have also spoken with Will Dan, and uh, they have also agreed to provide a, a stop point for the assessment of whether or not we want to move forward on the assessment. But their stop point is, is 15000 which would bring us to task three on their proposal. That would be just prior to uh, conducting the engineering report. They would get back to us. They would provide us information. And my intent at that time would be to come back to council uh, for approval to move forward. Um, it may be a special meeting, depending upon how uh, significant things are, how long it takes, because as you are aware, the time is of the essence. Um, we did hold off almost a month to bring this back to council for the savings, but that did put us a month further down the road because, uh, as you all know, that if we move forward on the assessment, that it has to be to the county in July. And if it's not to the county in July, we have to wait another year. So, um, so I'm asking for this evening is uh, approval from the city council to enter into uh, an agreement with Will Dan Services for 28750 uh, to have their firm assist us with establishing the park assessment district uh, in addition to an additional $20,000 uh, for outreach expenses. And the reason for that is, is that, as you well know, as part of this process, um, if the council approves to move forward with the engineering report prior to us sending out ballots to the community, it must come back to the city council for a resolution approval uh, setting the amount of the assessments as well as uh, approving the election process in other words setting out the balance so you have a few you have tonight you have the next time i come back to you telling you the um the whether or not there's a benefit to do this and you have another uh, ability uh, by resolution before it goes out to the citizens for vote to vote one way or the other so um, as part of that, though, I'm also asking for the 20000 in outreach because it is, it is a 45-day balloting process through the mail. I believe the outreach is important because we need to reach as many uh, of people that are affected by this as possible. So in all fairness, they have the right to, to make the determination if the council chooses to move forward on this, whether or not they want the assessment or not. And also, I'd be asking for you to rescind the resolution uh, with the agreement with SCI. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Okay. What, one of the questions I had, because I, I wasn't totally sure when we were talking about with CSI the first time. Uh, so they had a, a little $5,000 thing set aside to do this feasibility. I didn't quite understand, and maybe it was in the packet and I didn't see it, but exactly what questions did they have to have answered, in other words, to determine is it feasible or not. And the, the, the thing is, well, I guess what I'm trying to understand is that I want to keep things separate, whereas one thing is we are voting to get more information to help make a determination if we want to do the assessment. That's one thing. But what I don't want to do is to be kind of 
voting for this contract, and oh, by the way, it really is voting for the whole assessment. I mean, we really is the way it's structured. I, I want to keep this separate. Uh, so, you know, so the first contract, there was $5,000 to determine the what if. Now, Will Dan doesn't seem to have, it's not structured like that. There's only two parts of the Will Dan, if I'm understanding this. It's, it's all of the preliminary, and then it's B, outreach, and they block it together as one contract. You know, at the other meeting, Lindsay had said, why can't we just commit to the 5,000 just to find out about the what if? Taking that forward, why can't we just contract with Will Dan X amount of money to get their what if? In other words, whatever preliminary, and then they come back, and, and then we take a vote for phase two. Why does it have to be worked out together in one contract like this? Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin, it's, um, it is in the proposal. There are several tasks that are listed. They are going to charge us $15,000 to do tasks one through three, and then those three tasks will then give us the answer whether or not it's feasible. So, well, I, I just wanted the thing I'm not understanding. If that's the case, why don't we just commit for 15? Then why do we commit for 28? I guess I didn't understand that. You do have a break. You are committing to spend a minimum of 15000 to get your answer at task three, and then the, the contract is for the entire amount. We can cancel it at 15000 All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. When does the 20 part, is that, that only gets spent after we approve after the 15? Is that my understanding? Correct. Okay. Um, yeah, our, our current outreach right now is we're doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with opinion leaders within the community. Um, I have we have made one presentation to Rotary uh, today, so we are starting the community outreach in an effort to inform and educate as many people as we possibly can. Because I do feel that is important. Um, I have heard in the past on some you know 218 hearings on the 45 day mail out ballots that that the community wasn't sufficiently uh, informed. And I'll be frank with you, I would rather inform the community and lose than to not inform the community and have a yes vote. So I think it is important for the outreach, at least for the benefit of our citizens. If we uh, go this way, is there an option of looking for another way to accomplish the same thing? Yes. I mean, there's Talk to me about it, please. Well, there's always other ways. I mean, it's been mentioned to um, today. Um, it was mentioned, why don't we go after additional sales tax uh, funding for this? Currently, we're asking for one cent. The city can ask upwards to two cents. Uh, so that's available. Uh, there is a new um, ballot process that called the Citizens Initiative. It's, it's new. It was based upon a, a marijuana case. Um, it hasn't really been tested just yet. There, in fact, SCI is the one that's wanting to lead that effort. Go figure. Um, in fact, I just got an email from them. They're they're pushing that out, and I think it was the email that you just showed me a minute ago from them regarding this. Um, there also is the the special tax, the two thirds tax, but that's uh, a pretty high hurdle to get over. We could actually do a special tax, um, and then if we got two thirds of the vote, then it would be implemented. Uh, right now, the sense of the the benefit assessment seems to be the most uh, logical uh, way. To proceed at this point in time, Ron, I probably missed it, but help me real quick. The other company we had, we were initially thinking of going with. How did we find this company that was so much cheaper? We currently use Wildan for a significant uh, number of uh, engineering services. We also use them for some uh, landscaping lighting uh, districts, which are uh, similar in nature to, uh, to the park assessment. So they were, they were one of three uh, companies that I reached out to. And like I said, SCI was the one that was the most informative, the, most, the, the ones that were the most business friendly. Uh, Will Dam was more mechanical. We got the information and got the proposal. Are there, are there Probably not. Are there other companies out there that are even cheaper than this? Hey, there could be, but the old saying is you give, you, give, you give what you pay for. I mean, I can hold this off, and we can wait another year, year and a half. 
I mean, it's at the council's decision. Well, I, I wasn't going there. Okay. I was going with the process of how we had I to think, this. I think, to to switch I, th I think to switch horses a third time is going to be, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I haven't, the other company hasn't responded, and I was very surprised that, um, that their cost was this, but I think this may in part be because they do have other projects within the county in Tehachapi. Uh, and so they may have a little bit better uh, handle on our um, property tax information. Well, I know that we were waiting for people to respond. So what you're telling me is that the other entities have not yet responded as of yet. Correct. Okay. That, that's where I was going when I wasn't trying to say that, so let's stop three. it. Right. Yeah, right now, like I said, I, I felt compelled because of the price and because we had not signed the agreement to bring it back to council for the decision uh, and, and just in fair measure because it, of the cost savings. Now, if the benefit assessment uh, passes, we do get this money back to the general fund as part of the process. Okay. And I, at, the, at, the, at the other meeting uh, I had just brought up, I, I guess before, um, just in its simplest form, before we even look at the different options and stuff, I, I just posed the question at the last meeting just to make sure what, what our need in, is on this thing. And I know that we, you know, we have a lot of things that we want to do um, in all the departments, and a lot of things we want to do as a city as a whole. And the other question is, you know, what are the needs? And I'm not a park and ex rec expert, but just common sense tells me a couple of things that as a good sanity check, that it would be good to take a look at 15 to 20 other cities that are, are, are very comparable to us uh, in many ways and just see what, what their percentage of uh, monies that are expended from their general fund, actual expenses, though not planned, what, what did they actually spend from the general fund? How does that relate to the percentage of, of what goes to park and rec? Just to get some kind of a sanity check to see how all the other cities do. Uh, concerning the need. And so uh, the, the staff did a great job. I put together an initial uh, Excel uh, matrix and then refined it, and uh, Jason and his crew called. And we did a, a, a test with about 20 different cities, mm -hmm. and that were within about 25% uh, of population size of us, which is around 7,000, plus or minus. And then we set about 33%, one-third larger or less, on uh, the general uh, fund expenses. And then the software calculated the rest and the percentages just to take, we asked a couple of mainframe questions. We didn't go into a big lengthy survey, but just ballpark thing. The ballpark things were uh, number of parks that you have, the number of employees, number of sports or field complexes, number of public pools, and that's it. So it's just a couple of mainframe questions just to do a sanity check and to see how it would work. And I had done one, uh, and it came out, and then I had asked that they, we pick some cities that were not real rich cities, but uh, some that had military bases nearby that might be more in keeping, because California is a gigantic state, and we probably had 100 options to pick from. So anyway, and Ron, Ron threw in about six or seven ones that were a little bit out of the threshold, but that's fine. Uh, that were a little more prosperous than us to see how it worked. But interestingly enough, in the two charts that we ended up running, uh, the, the averages were, were very, very similar. Uh, in fact, in the more prosperous cities, the, the, uh, some of the numbers went down instead of up. So here's just a quick summary. Uh, as far as the average of how much money that the general fund that we expend and the general fund compared to what our parks and rec spends, the percentages, amazingly, is just about right on par. We're about average at 14%. Um, and the, uh, if you add in the prosperous cities, we're 12, uh, Ridgecrest is 14%, a little bit more. But it's not that much different. Number of employees, Ridgecrest does have 22% uh, more employees mm -hmm. than the average uh, of this sampling of, of 20 cities. We have 300% fewer parks uh, than some of the others, but Ridgecrest has 56% more fields uh, and complexes. Now, that's kind of subjective. I'm not sure exactly how everybody qualifies those things. But I guess when you look at it, um, there's nothing that's shocking here. We seem to be in line 
with, uh, with other cities of, of our approximate size and with approximate general fund. Uh, but so I, I guess the point, my, the whole point, I guess, from my standpoint, was a sanity check to establish need. In other words, are we really, is the Park and Rec Department compared to these cities really, really hurting? Are we really, really in the dumps? Are we really, really understaffed? Are we really, really under anything? And we would have to do more research to determine that, but this sanity quick check is this one, and I thank the staff for doing it. They were very uh, responsive uh, in doing that. It's just a sanity point, okay? So uh, I also asked them to do a complete income and uh, expense report using our new WhizBang software that we, uh, we did, and they did that and sent that. Um, I think some more research would probably have to be done, but I just wanted to do a quick sanity check. I also want to commend uh, the city manager because at the last meeting I made a big point publicly about, well, did we ask them if they'd take 50 or 75 or did we get other bids? And I suggested we go out for an RFP on that 100 grand, the magic number the guy threw out. And Ron went out and got it to 28. So bravo, bravo. Okay, bravo. So, now, there may be some differences, but bravo. Okay, now, so where does that go with this? I just want to make sure in the resolution, however, that we separate and we know for a fact that tonight, as is presented, we're voting on more information and we are not committing, it's not a pre-fudge commitment of any way, shape, form, or fashion that we're voting on the full assessment and agreeing to it. That's not what we're voting on, correct? We're voting just for additional information and to have Mr. Wil the Will Dan group take this to the 15K point and give us more information. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, then. Well, that, okay, that's fine. Thank we're, you. We're voting on a contract, but we can cut it off at 15. Correct. Okay. If I may, we can cut off the contract at any point because it's there's termination for convenience. So even past the 15, if for some reason whatever reason the city wants to end it, then the city would pay for only the services that were, that were performed up to that point. So I have a quick question because you said we have to have it to the county by when? I believe it's July 10th. So my question is, I did, so we have to decide by July 10th, but then there's the statewide ballot initiative uh, that's going to be on in June. Um, that is the, it's a parks and water bond. And so I, I just thought that it might be good if after we see if that passes or fails statewide, then we reassess if we in, move in a quick In a quick review that you sent me, it does guarantee 200,000 one-time funding to the cities, but it also has a, a component in there that we're quite familiar with in law enforcement having having to do with a more blighted gang related communities for the grants. There's like seven hundred and sixty eight million dollars will be available for that, but it's it's more of the safe streets uh, mm -hmm. formula. And I think we may have a difficulty applying for some of those because our crime rate's not high enough. Our air is not dirty enough, and all those things that come into play was my quick view, quick review of that. Okay. Now, the council, let's say, okay, the process of this for us to go through is let's say we do the engineering report, or we do the assessment, I come back, it, it's looking good. We, we can move forward with this amount. They do the engineering report. The engineering report is still going to be very important because that's going to bring back information of, of what's, the, what's the, the average assessment going to be. It's going to be the differences between the, the special benefit and the general benefit, which are very important in being able to put this on. The council at that point in time by resolution is going to have the opportunity to approve that. When you approve that, the only thing that happens next is, is we develop the ballot question and then it gets mailed out. We have a 45-day balloting period. Once that's done, then it comes back here for a public hearing for the county and the balance ballots and then the decisions made if it's affirmative then the council can accept it the council can just decide to say no at that point in time even if the public votes 90 percent for it you still have that choice to do that so there's a lot of safeguards in here where you can kill this thing at any point in time and then even if it passes and we do um, apply the assessment on the properties 
each year there has to be an engineering report. And if you look in your proposal, there's about there's a there's a ten thousand uh, dollar proposal in here every year for them to do an engineering report. And they have to report every year on what we spend it on, what's the balance of the funds that was received, and what do we plan on spending on the next year. So this is very very restrictive funding, and the council during that hearing has to decide whether or not they're going to continue with the assessment. They can either keep it at the maximum, they can lower it if they choose to, and they can lower it down to one dollar if you choose to. So you have a lot of, there's a lot of oversight that comes with this assessment. It can only be spent in Ridgecrest, um, it can only be spent on certain things, maintenance and improvements in, in, the, in the park district. It can't supplant um, because there has to be a level of general fund effort that matches the special benefit or else we cannot justify it. And that's the reason for the engineering report. So you have a lot of safeguards in, in how this thing is presented. Well, the, the other thing, we want to make sure that, that when they come back that, you know, for people who would be voting on that, they have to have the exact formula, uh, and it has to be very straightforward as to what people would actually be charged so they can figure based on their own personal situation. There were a lot of questions about people who own uh, more than one house, more than one property, a multiple family unit, a multiple rental. I mean, I... It needs to. It needs to be very clear that people are. You know, when you receive your ballot, you will know what your assessment is. And the way the assessment goes, if it turns out that, let's say, you have an assessment that's 59 in in one neighborhood and then 39 in the other, the the person who has the the 59 dollar vote actually has a more weighted vote than the 39 dollar vote. So it's not like the you know the Say people. That again, please. Your vote is counted based upon the weight of your vote, the amount of dollars you're paying. So the ones that pay the more end up with a more vote. So if you have people that are, that are heavily assessed that don't want it, they, if they vote no, it's going to take a lot of people saying yes uh, to make it happen. Council comment? So if I own six pieces of property, I'm going to get six votes. Is that right? You're going to get six weighted votes, yes. Weighted, weighted votes. Weighted votes, yeah. They call, they call them EBUs. If so, they're dumpy properties, they, <laughs> they don't count. So, so if I've got a, um, a commercial property valued at $650,000, it has more weight on it than if I live in a house that's worth $100,000. The weight based on the tax. Yeah, a lot of it, the weight's based upon your proximity to the locations. It's kind of like a heat map. The closer you so, are to locations, so the more you If pay. you live across the street from the park, you're paying more than if you live, well, you know. Well, my business is almost across the street from a park, and I certainly don't get benefit from the park. It's from my business. Right? Maybe you have some lost lost opportunities there. <laughs> you could be swinging at lunch. I, I should have been putting in a, I should have put in a Dairy Queen, huh? <laughs> yes, you should have. <laughs> is it conceivable and I know you don't know this but I'm going to ask just in the realm if the weighted votes are mostly people with numerous properties or um, a number of rentals things like that conceivably the vote could be no even though there were more yeses, correct. Is that well, correct? Well, the only votes that count are the people who vote, and that's the the purpose for the outreach to get more people to vote. Uh, but yes, there we will be. We should have a list of probably our top fifty uh, businesses or entities that pay the most, and there will be re there will be outreach to those uh, groups that have the most votes to at least educate them on on what we're trying to do. What determines um, how close you are? Is across the street close? Yes. Is down the road a quarter of a mile? Or That's close? the reason for the engineering report. Okay. So we obviously don't have that yet. I think, okay. I think what the mayor was saying was that more votes will win, but that may end up being fewer people. Is that what you were asking? No. No, I was asking the opposite. She was saying that you could have a bunch of yeses, but if they're not weighted as heavily as the no votes, the no's may actually win, even though you had more actual yes votes, but because they're weighted. 
Hypothetically, yes. Okay. Okay. Any other council comment? Okay. I'm going to open up to the public. Good evening, Council. Mike Neal. Uh, I have one main thing to say, but I got a couple of what I'll call kind of housekeeping informational things to take care of first. Uh, the first one is that uh, I, I was not here, but I've watched the video and looked at the materials from the last meeting and actually what's included in this meeting. And uh, the monies that are being wanted here in this tax assessment district uh, were all tallied up uh, last time. And, uh, you know, the Parks and Recs manager was given a blank slate, and it's kind of like telling your wife, well, here, I got a blank check. How much do you want to redecorate the house? And he just went, he went for it. Well, they also included $3 million to renovate Penny Pool, which not being told, and I think some of you probably do know, and I think the city manager ought to know, is uh, that the owner of Cordell Construction is lining up contractors along with himself to donate all the necessary labor and some of the materials to fix Penny Pool. He has told me directly that maybe $200,000 or thereabout might be needed to be provided by the city of materials to get that job done. So there's $3 million you're being told that they need that they don't need. Well, that's a, quite a large percentage of the $12 million that was thrown out at the last meeting. The other one is that this whole effort started off with no communication to the council that, that I'm aware of whatsoever back in October or thereabouts uh, with a survey that was done throughout the city. Our, our household was actually called and, and we participated in that. And so I got curious and I asked for a copy of the survey uh, questions uh, that, you know, hadn't been answered yet. But uh, what I got was a letter with a bunch of legal excuses saying they can't give me that. Well, I'm just going to say that's legal baloney. We paid for it with our tax dollars. We deserve to be able to see it. I want the council to direct the city manager to provide me that survey and the answers to that survey. If not, I will go to agencies that work to go to court to force cities to be forthright and transparent to get that data. The next thing that I want to say, and I'm only going to say this one thing, there's a lot that could be said about what's been presented forth, and I think a lot of the, the desires here are way over bloated, and the cost is a lot more than it ought to be, and there's a lot of mistakes and a lot of things that I could say. But the problem is I think that's all a big smoke screen, hiding the fact that what's going on here tonight is actually shouldn't even be happening. If you were to think about the proper representative process that the council owes their due diligence to the public to do, if you put it on this piece of paper and lined it up from first to the last, you would have a public meeting saying we have a problem that the city manager, his only duty in these areas is for him to present the financial condition of the city to the council, not to propose taxes. He's out of line proposing this altogether. You should have a public meeting saying we have a problem. Let's discuss it. You should have another public meeting probably because this is a tax and it's no small deal to propose a tax on people in this day and age in the state of California, tax taxifornia. Asking people to provide you input on how we solve the problem. And then if after you take that and you give further direction to staff to say, now, step three, you go institute the suggestions to improve your cost efficiencies. And, I, and I've written an email to all of you basically laying this out, okay? But the public needs to hear it, and I think some of you need to hear it again. Then you see what you can do and how you can solve your problem there. And then, if you still have a problem, then the council talks about what do we do? How do we get the money? Do we need to have a tax? Have, let the public have input, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> That's the last thing. What's going on here is the last thing that should be happening is what's being proposed first. So what I'm going to say is 
you should vacate this whole process and say, no, let's do it right. We're not going to start talking about a tax assessment district and paying money to look at doing that and making that happen and so forth and so on because we have not done what properly ought to be done for our citizens. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm not going to legitimize any further discussion of this on my part because I think it's wrong simply to be here having this discussion tonight at all. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ronald Porter. First off, I'm going to say I, I, there's one point I agree tremendously with Mr. Neal, and that we have a republic form of government, which means that we elect people to represent us, but we're also supposed to be able to provide input before they act. What's being done here is politics 101. Let's make an urgency out of it and deny the public a place to speak. Or let's spend money out of it before they get a chance to. We're now going to spend $15,000 to move forward on something that last week they approved to spend $5,000 to show us that we were legally allowed to do it. I'm really, really, very wondering about that and myself. They approved the $5,000. Now, we need to sit back and decide we need to talk about this. We have, we, we have the cart and the horse before we even built the trail. We don't know where, whether we need a mule or a donkey to run this thing. We need to sit and say, do we want this assessment? If you're going to fall into the trap, well, we have to get it done, then the only people that lose here is the citizens. And you guys lose because your reputation loses. We're here to provide you help, assistance, agreement, disagreement, doesn't matter. That's why we're here, because we all love our community. And I can guarantee you, I probably live in this community more than there might be one person in this, in this hall that's lived here longer than I have. And I'm becoming to the point now that I'm ashamed of Ridgecrest <clears throat> and its lack of its republic form of government. But one thing I really do want to address is part of this was outreach that they want to spend money on. Outreach for whom? Wonder Woman was illegal if they put single outreach. If Ron wants to go at Mr. I'm sorry, I apologize. Mr. Strand wants to walk around giving these speeches. I want to walk with him or have someone that there will give the opposite side of you. Because otherwise, it's completely illegal under California law. Because it's using taxpayer dollars to promote a single side's view. I understand we might want parks. But also understand that there's going to be a lot of people paying for these that don't use them. And you have to look at the special interest part of it. I love baseball fields. But let the people, as they did when I was growing up here in Ridgecrest, let the people that use them pay for them. If we can't do that, fine. Uh, Mr. Neal brought up the past question. I've asked this half a dozen times in this city. How much is it going to cost to bring the penny pool up to standards that we have to have? I've been un unable to get an answer from him. I even called the uh, recreations director. I can't get an answer from him. Why can't we have get a simple answer? I think it's... Uh, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. We can't offer solutions or offer you guidance or anything else if we don't have the information to, to work from. We don't need this park and recreation money this year. We just spent, uh, in the last two years or three years, probably $6 million on the parks and baseball fields. Right now we're wasting a whole bunch of money tearing three of them out when we could have built the new ones on, on ground that we paid for four years ago. I'm sorry, let's talk about this. Use the people. We have a very, very intelligent group of people in this valley. I know lots of them would help you find solutions. But let's use them. But we can't use them unless we are given the information and the opportunity to do so. Right here, is the, the, if you read it tonight, resolution to move forward with this. Well, first, we're moving forward with what? Something we even haven't, haven't been given the opportunity to discuss. Is there any one of you on council that, don't, that doesn't think this is a big enough issue that it needs to be discussed without any weights or any balances or anything to, so people can come and say, we want it or we don't. Or do we just want to throw away $15,000 and say, oh, we don't want that after all. Or do we want to throw away $15,000 and say, hey, you know, that's not even legal. What isn't legal, sir? No, look, if, if the, this, this assessment district may not be legal under, under the California law. 
or the way it's been put forth. That's what we have to. That's where we have to come out and, and discuss this. Thank you. And that's why it's important that you put it before the people. And if, if the whole thing is we have to get it done by July, then we're we're playing the wrong game. We need to sit this and say, do we want an assessment district? And even if we get one, how are we going to spend the money? What do we want to spend the money on? I think those are reasonable questions. Is there any one of you sitting on council that don't think those are reasonable questions for a citizen to ask? Then why aren't we stopping this whole process right now in its tracks and going that direction? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. My name is Denise Kite. And I, along with these other two gentlemen, don't see what the urgency is in this. Get a little closer, Denise. Okay. Thank I don't you. see what the urgency is in this. I don't think that we have enough information. I definitely go along with Mr. Porter that somebody needs to go to these meetings of these opinion leaders and also present the other side. I was at Rotary today to Mr. Strand's presentation, and he's very passionate about this but I felt that it was very skewed to say yes to this assessment district. He also brought up the fact that there might be some type of a cost of living increase that goes along with this. I haven't heard that mentioned in any meetings. It, it just seems like we're just rushing towards something and the public doesn't have all the information. Do you plan on having more public meetings with the nuts and bolts of what this is supposed to be? Have we completely gotten rid of an idea of trying to uh, do another sales tax to see if we can't uh, pay for this? Are we going to have a sunset clause in it? Uh, are we going to have more meetings on this, more public meetings? It just seems like we're rushing, and I think that we need to sit back and take some time to consider what really needs to be done and what's the best way to go about doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Stan Rotoro. Um, I would like to see more money spent on the quality of life in our town. Uh, in particular, I feel very strongly, like some of you, that we need a swimming pool. We live in the desert, for Pete's sakes, we need a swimming pool. But there are right ways and wrong ways of being able to fund it. And quite frankly, my feeling is what's been proposed is totally the wrong way to fund it. We have two issues. One is do we have a need? And I think if we actually put some effort into it, probably can show that there is a need, but for how much? That is how much money and for what? But I don't want to go into that right now because I want to talk about the other side of the coin. Where do we get the money? My feeling is that the property, putting the money on a property tax is the absolute wrong way to do it. The city has already raised the sewer fees in the, in what was back in 2012 from $120 a year to $360 a year on the average. Uh, single-family dwelling. And what have we done with that additional $240 a year? Well, it's sitting in a slush fund right now and doing nothing. I don't think we're even making very much interest on it right now. I, I think that well is dry, and I think we've done it enough. The proposed tax is a regressive tax. Uh, it's going to make the low-income people hurt much more than the middle-income people. And speaking on a more personal note, there are people living in the county that won't pay a cent. Uh, the city manager mentioned a few minutes ago, we could, we have the option to add to the sales tax. And we know that the sales tax brings in approximately a million dollars for each quarter of percent that we raise it, all right? And we we need what five? 
Well, even even with the numbers that haven't been vetted, I think the number that we were told is we're looking for like five hundred thousand dollars. So there are other options, and there are more intelligent options that are more fair to everybody concerned. I was looking through the what I consider ill-fated sewer study, cost study, and based upon it, there are like 12,500 sewer hookups, which means that there are 12,500 households in our valley. If you multiply that by the $49 on the average, don't know where that came from at all, you don't get the $500,000 that was estimated in the tax report. You come up with $612,000. Um, so s somewhere somebody is off by $100,000. Uh, I also noted the $20,000 of outreach. And depending upon what the money is going to be used for, I am either against it or vehemently against it, the city should not be trying to take sides in terms of the, trying to push the citizens into voting one way or the other. This facts and only the facts should be given, and that should be it. Um, one of the things that was stated in the staff report uh, was that we're going to use unallocated general funds. That is, we were going to allocate unallocated general funds. Well, I don't know where that came from, but I'm here to tell you that the FY18 revenue is projected to be $14.78 million. The projected expenditures, that is, those already authorized allocated funds, are $15.07. That is, we have already obligated $300,000 more than we have expected income. So I have no idea where the $48,000, where, where is it? I have no idea. It, it's not there. It's going to have to come out of the reserve, is all I can see. So in any event, I would recommend that we stop where we are, go back, figure out what we want to do, not only from a standpoint of what are the parks and recs needs, but also how do we get that money. Thank you. Thank you, sir. David Matthews, there's been a lot been said, and I uh, agree with a lot of it. I'm not going to repeat any of it. What I am going to call your attention to, though, is something Stan mentioned, and that is the fact that there are people living in the county that will come in and use the facilities of the city, and they will pay nothing. I mentioned this the last time around, and uh, I want to reiterate it again because I think that's unfair. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there any other public comment? Council comment. Okay, Ron, um, talk to me about the time frame issue. Well, we need to get started. Um, I, in talking to Will Dan, the consultant that we're going to be working with, comes back to work on the 23rd. If you approve this tonight, tomorrow I will call um, my contact at Will Dan. Tom, it's been approved. We still have to. Uh, secure uh, the city's professional services agreement with Will Dan. Obviously, we have to protect our interest in that fashion. Um, but the idea then would be to get moving. Do we have... Um, I know you said you had to have it so it could go on the ballot in June. And well, it, need, it needs more likely to be out in May because it's a 45-day balloting period. Okay. Then we have to have the election where they count the ballots and there's still additional uh, okay. stuff that has to be processed. So we have February and March and April. Is that correct? To get our ducks in a row if we want to do that. 
Correct, and during that time, uh, Will Dan will be doing their assessment. They'll be doing their engineering report. And then it, once, I mean, obviously the assessment, there's going to be a, a slide time in there um, where when I bring this back to council to report whether or not we're going to move forward, we're, we'll lose a little bit of time there too, depending upon the timing of things. If we... Um If we vote no on this, what? How does that impact what we're doing other than time? Nothing. Everything would come to a stop, and we would just stop. If we don't vote, how does that impact? If we don't vote, then I think Tonight. whatever whatever efforts. Well, if we wait two weeks, then you take a chance that that if this thing does pass after the July uh, date, that we'll be putting on the tax rolls in July of 2019, and we'll be able to start collecting it thereafter. We do have, we have been meeting with opinion leaders. I think we have approximately 30, 35 meetings planned for this month, as well as uh, beginning to meet with groups of churches and doing public meetings. We are gonna have our outreach before we even, you get this information back, we're already moving forward educating the community because I think that's the important part. But going back to your original question, if we delay this, then if we move forward, then we just are assured that the following year we'll have the, the funding. And if the council decides not to move forward, no harm, no foul, we just move on and live within our budget. And, and when council directs us to find another revenue source that's appropriate, then we will obviously in earnest uh, move forward. I was reading the um, the water and parks issue that's going to be on the, the bond issue. I, I recognize that our chances of getting anything for parks is going to be blessed difficult because of all the constraints that we're not a, we're a good city. We are not uh, throwing our money away. We're not doing the things that that uh, don't take care of ourselves and expect the state to do it or the taxpayers to do it. And so I, in my brilliance, um, I did not see a whole lot there that we could get money from that. And I didn't see a time frame that was reasonable for us to do it. And I'm wondering if we do not vote now. Can we look at, as some have talked about, you know, originally I had said I wanted to do a, a valley-wide uh, assessment that everybody who used it, who lived in the valley, would pay. I think that's a fair way of doing it. I know it's very difficult to do. I know it's time-consuming. And I don't know that we're going to get a whole lot more money for it. And the two-thirds vote is a very scary thing to try to do. Talk to me about those as those assumptions I've made. Well, if you do a, a uh, Parks and Rec district, obviously the city is either going to have to run the district or they're going to have to use part of our facilities, let the district run it. You'd be forming another form of government within the valley, potentially. Because if you look at other areas, I think it's uh, Shafter and Taft, they have separate boards. So you'd be creating a whole other level of government to deal with your recreation. And I would assume that with that second layer of government, now they would have to assess something. It would be more likely on their property taxes. And you're talking more than the $4 a month that we're probably going to be asking for on average for this. Um, so it's a decision that you make. You know, we passed Major V with 65%. That was a, a significant issue in this community dealing with public safety. And if we can't hit 66% on that, I don't know if we're going to hit 66% on a uh, quality of life issue with most. I understand that many people are saying, you want me to pay, but I am going to receive no direct benefit. Let me take the other stand. I think we have a responsibility to leave when we to lead and when we are done we will have left a better city than what we got it in. I'm quite I think, yeah, I'm quite familiar with the budget. Structurally we have no way of, of 
accomplish in the things we want to accomplish it with the benefit assessment. I, I, I recognize if you want, that. If you want to improve quality of life, we have to find a way of funding this. We do not have it in our budget structure. I mean, we could, you know, do some extremes, but any time you take money from one endeavor, you, you, you reduce the footprint on that. Quality of life is where we need to be. Um, we potentially may have a BRAC in 2019. That's, that's going to be our top three employers. I think it's it. You cannot argue with the fact is is that all three of our top employers within the community say that recruitment and retention is a problem. Now, I, I firmly believe. You know, you listen to Mr. Covey read his book. You have a sphere of influence. What's the city's sphere of influence? We have the ability to um, provide infrastructure. We provide public safety. We make people safe. We provide roads for people to travel on. We either encourage or discourage businesses from coming within our community. We need to protect the base's mission because the, the base brings jobs to the community. A stable base enables the base to bring more projects, more programs in within the community. We do have to be careful that if we're unstable, we have the GSA um, issue that comes about. Um, you know, A lot of these things are taken into account when we're looking at whether or not we're going to be hit by a brack. Irregardless of that, we still need to deal with our quality of life, and this is the only way of addressing it. In this way here, if the citizens get to vote, they get to decide um, whether or not they want to tax themselves or not. All, all, the, all I'm recommending the council do is give the community an opportunity to make its own decision. And then we can decide as council, we've checked that box, they don't want to go any further, we're okay with that. Then we just maintain everything we possibly can to the best of our ability within our budget. If I make a motion that asks the rest of the council to hold off this for to our next meeting, does that give us enough time and enough inf to get enough information back from whomever to make a reasonable decision based on facts? I, I don't know if any other additional information I can provide you. I mean, we have been making uh, several one-on-one -on -one meetings, and in my view, they've been very positive. Um, I do have meetings scheduled with Ms. Kite and Mr. Ritora because I obviously want to educate even our detractors in this endeavor. Did make a presentation for a rotary. I don't know how well they received it, but I don't know other than allowing Will Dan to move forward on their their inquiry, there's really not much else I can really provide you. Uh, okay, let me pass to the rest of the council. Okay, so one thought I had, and I was asking him, is to me, a sales tax would end up costing, because $49 is the average. So that's not saying that everyone pays $49. Yes, some people pay more, but some people pay yes. If you did a sales tax, to me, most people would end up paying a lot more than $49 a year, um, because th that, like, one penny on you know for every that just doesn't okay. seem like it would be i i, I think 49 dollars would be end up being this assessment would be cheaper than the sales tax option um the thing that does give me pause and i want to question more is the 20k for the public outreach um because i know when measure v was being done I mean, some of those flyers that were sent out were eight and a half by 11, two-sided, glossy, and that's just, that's a lot of money to be it spent. It was paid by donations. No, there was some put out by the city and there was some put out by- Is that true? Measure, the Measure V Committee. Because the Measure V Committee there were, I think there were that. a couple that were, I'd have to double check, but I think <laughs> the committee spent most of the money on the advertising. I think there might have been one or two flyers produced by the city, but I'm not sure. Captain, do you know for I, sure you I were... have them, and they had the city emblem on them. They, I, well, they, they all would have we, the city emblem all, on it. But the, yeah. But it very well, clearly was a city. The, city. the city did send the flyer out. I don't know how many, but the committee spent the majority of the money right. to, uh, on the outreach. So I guess because we raised a lot of money. The city sent the informational flyers out. Yeah, 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 it was an informational, but it was a 
it, it was not a cheap flyer. But I just look at it as if their last meeting there was a number of sports groups here. And so if those groups are really interested in seeing something like this, I would think that they would form committees and be willing to pay for the mailers and that sort of thing. So I, I don't necessarily like the idea because I know that you all are going around to all of these meetings, educating. You can do interviews with the paper. Those don't cost any money. Mm -hmm. So I don't like the 20K for the public outreach. Um, that gives me pause. I, I, I don't know that I agree with using money for that. I like the option of being able to see how this counts out and how they do the zones um, and that we have the option before we move forward further down the road. We don't necessarily have to decide right at this moment, yes, we're doing an assessment district. We get to answer some more of the questions. I mean, just like last meeting, we said, okay, we'll come back and we'll look at how these zones are formulated and what the dollar amounts are specifically. And um, and we approved that last time. So I'm just trying to figure out also why everyone was for $92,000 and then this is 28000 So that's where I, <laughs> I guess I'm also trying to figure out that that seemed like it moved through pretty quickly and this is uh, a fraction of that. So other council comments. Well, I, I just, <clears throat> I just would like to know. I would love to have a one-page thing that tells me that after we spend fifteen thousand, these, this is the data that we're going to get back, and that's the data that'll help us to make our decision. Do, do, do we have that one page, Ron, that says, "Look, after the fifteen grand, well, if it's neat and sweet." Let's see. Yeah, it's in the list. One, two, and three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you move that over there, that's one. <laughs> it's in Will Dan's report. We need to talk so everybody can hear. So Oh, I was just showing him the Will Dan, the task what task one, two, and three include. Okay. And task three is what specifically includes the zone breakdown, the cost per zone, uh, the allocation. So. You want to read these three paragraphs? I think. Do, do you all have the agenda? Did Does everybody you? here understand that the fifteen thousand dollars was going to cover one, two, and three, and that we're going to have those answers if we spend fifteen grand? Mm -hmm. No, it's it, online um, in the full agenda. Packet. All right, read them. Please. They don't have them. I can. Please it, read it. I mean, this is what your 15K is buying you. And the question you have to ask is if we get the answers to these three paragraphs, does that give you the data that you need to make a decision to move forward on this whole thing or not? So th these three paragraphs, after we get the answers, have to answer your question to proceed forward with this or not. All right? That, we, everybody all right on that? Number one, establish a comprehensive district database. Objective, to establish a database containing all parcels within the city to be included in the proposed maintenance assessment district description. Using base electronic parcel information available to Will Dan in the area, we will establish an update as needed, a district assessment database using available resources including the county secured role, city data, third party data, such as CD data. It'll contain each of the benefiting properties for the assessment district. It will incorporate key parcel information and characteristics relevant to developing and appointing and necessary implementing this, uh, this uh, assessment. None of this t uh, deliverables, none at this time. All right, D task two, establish comprehensive improvement matrix and budgets. Work with the city staff to identify and clarify the Im proposed improvements, facilities, and services specifically associated with the development of the district. Based on this improvement matrix and identified expenses, create a comprehensive annual budget to ensure maximum cost to benefit 
equity for each property and guarantee the long-term financial stability and funding of the improvements. Description, identify and quantify the specific on-site improvements to be maintained and review the annual budget for the maintenance operation and service. Will Dan will utilize modeling simula software that uses standard per cost unit cost for various improvements in the typical service hours and cost estimates for calculating annual maintenance costs. The budget may incorporate, but is not limited to, regular annual maintenance expenses, specific servicing costs, admin costs, periodic maintenance expenditures, long-term repair and rehab, applicable capital improvement, and other funding. The prepared budget will be comprehensive and identify the full long-term cost of providing the improvements, including the appropriate reserve funding. The goal of this task is to accurately depict the true funding requirements. I, most of that is general. None at this time deliverables. The resulting budget information, along with the method of portionment developed in task three, will be discussed. Here's task three. Is that there's three of them? Mm -hmm. Development of benefit nexus, whatever that means, and assessments. Develop appropriate benefit findings, general versus special, district structure, boundaries, and benefit zones cost allocation, method of apportionment, and the proposed assessments based on the provisions of the California Constitution and current case law. Description. Using the parcel database, improvement matrix, and budget developed in prior tasks, Will Dan will establish an appropriate methodology for apportioning cost. The method of apportioning costs, to the extent possible, will utilize a methodology consistent with the weighted method of apportioning apportionment utilized for similar assessments. However, the benefit nexus and cost allocation developed must be in compliance with the provisions of the California Constitution and consistent with recent court decisions regarding assessments, specifically focusing on the ID and quantification of special and general benefits. For these reasons, a discussion of general benefit is likely the proposed assessments may not be able to fund 100 percent of the full annual cost and other analysis and evaluation will identify general benefit costs to the city would be obligated to fund from other sources. So uh, none of this addresses, though, if I own six apartments or two houses or a tree house, how much my bill is going to be. And I, I would like to be able to... to, yeah, to it tells you what each zone will be charged. And then based on that, you would look up and you calculate it yourself. It's not like... Turn, turn on your microphone. Oh, yeah. sorry. It, it gives the each zone and what each zone will pay. And then you look at the zone. And if you own a property there, you say, okay, I pay this much. If I own a property over in this zone, I pay that much. And then you could add it all up yourself. It's, I mean... No, they're not going to calculate for 12,000 individual. Well, actually, whoever owns property, you're not going to get a breakdown that specific. You you wouldn't even get that on your mailer. You would get, here's your vote for this property, um, and here's how much it be, would be. It wouldn't, they don't know, they're not going to calculate. If you own 60 properties, here's what your total bill is going to be. You have to well, use no, some addition right, yourself. Well, yeah. Okay. Is there any other counsel? Yes, I, I've been patiently waiting for my turn. Please. <laughs> um, I have a couple concerns. Um, several people mentioned fair, what's fair, what's not fair. I don't care what tax you put on, it's not going to be fair to everybody. You put a sales tax on instead of a property tax, there's going to be a lot of people who pay the sales tax that will never use the, the pool or the <laughs> parks or whatever. I don't agree with weighted because I don't think because I live across the street from Penny Pool, I should pay twice as much as someone that lives a mile away. Am I really going to use it that many more times than the people that live a mile away? Um, the comment was made that, that we have a group of people putting together that they can fix Penny Pool for a couple hundred thousand dollars. That would be great, but the only way we're ever going to know what it really costs to fix Penny Pool is to put it out to bid. We've never done that. We've had figures anywhere from a million dollars to three million dollars, but we really don't know what it's going to cost. I think our experience with the parks is sometimes we think a cost is a lot less than it's going to turn out to be. Mm -hmm. um, years ago, when I was a kid, my church would build a building on donations, and it took a long time 
and a lot of donations to get things done. Um, it, it, and I haven't talked to any of these people in this donation group. Uh, I know Chuck Gordell, but we haven't talked about it. But I don't know where they're getting their estimates on how they're going to do the pool for $200,000. That'd be great if they did, but uh, things don't always go as planned. I would be... I, Lindsay, I kind of agree with you. I would, I would be willing to vote today for the 28. I don't think we necessarily need to vote for the 20 today. Um, but, uh, but whether we go property tax, sales tax, or whatever we go, it's not going to be fair to everybody. Yeah. And it's not also not fair to, prov to not provide things to the citizens of Ridgecrest because the county people aren't paying. Mm -hmm. I said it's also not fair to, to not provide things to the city of Ridgecrest people because the county people are not paying. Yeah. To say that say that they can come use it for free, they're really not going to come use it for free. They're going to have to pay a fee to get in. Uh, but in order to come up with something that's totally fair to everybody, that's not going to happen. Life's not fair. <laughs> okay. Just be mindful, the, the, the outreach funding, none of that will be spent until such time as the council decides to move forward. And I do believe that component is important, whether it's a, a glossy mailer or whether or not we pay for Facebook to blast everybody that has a, a phone in their hand to be able to educate them on it. Because the last thing I want to do is, because if the advocacy group puts out all the information, it, there is a spin on it. It's not, infor it's not informational, it's... You vote for this. I have no way of controlling their message, not unless I have a way of getting it out, and I don't have a way of getting it out. So just be mindful. The informational is more to get people to vote against it as it would be to get them to vote for it because we are informing the community. We do not want to be caught on the end of the stick that basically says the only people we contacted were the people we thought would vote for this. And that's the reason for the money, not, not to send out glossy stuff, just to come up with a plan. I don't even know if we're going to spend the full 20000 but to be able to, to craft it in a way where we educate the people the most on what they're going to vote for, I believe, is important. Otherwise, all we're going to do is send out a paper ballot that says yes or no with a little bit of information on it. Well, well I agree with you, Ron, but I don't think we yeah. need to vote on the 20000 tonight. Right. Yeah, we, we, can bring, we can bring it back. But yeah, but yeah, we, the, could, we could, after we get the 15 spent and decide, yes, we want to go forward, then we could vote on it. Fair enough. Fair enough. See, that's okay. Eddie. Uh, hold on, I got I got a point. Wait a minute, he's speaking. I I I was kind of torn in this, and I was sitting back listening to both sides of the story. And it's amazing that we have we have individuals that constantly remind us that we're not being fair to the public, but then when we bring something to the public, it's like we're still not being fair to the public. So. And then if people want to make sure that the message is being allocated correctly and proper, then I'm sure the people that's going to be pounding the streets will be happy to have as many people with them pounding the streets. So I don't think that's an issue as well. Um, I agree with Mike in reference to it's not going to be fair, but I think we have as citizens an obligation to make this community better, whether we live around the corner, whether we live out of the county, uh, I may not ever go to the to the park, or I may take my grandchildren, but I still believe we have an obligation to make this better for the younger generation. So to say that I'm being taxed because I don't participate in or I won't participate in it, we go places all the time that we participate in that we don't pay taxes for. So I, th I, th I think we should move forward with it. That's, that's the way I felt about it. Is there a motion? So. I move approval of the Wildan contract um, for the fifth. Well, I guess we have to approve the full contract. And then um, for it to come back after the fifteen thousand dollar portion for approval, and at that time we will decide if we want to allocate the twenty for the public outreach. I second that. Okay. 
Do it again. Three or five are in. I'm voting, but it's, I'm not voting for the entire assessment. I'm voting for the resolution only. Which is what the motion was. That's correct. I'm making it clear for me. Thank you. <laughs> I, I would think your vote would do that, Wallace. Now, it's, Wait a minute. Oh, that's please. not true. Five eyes. Motion carries. Okay. You did. They do. You did. Okay. We are now um, under um, committee reports. City org. Oops. City org. We did meet. Um, we discussed. We had four items on the agenda. The first one was the uh, municipal code as it applies to serving on city council. We're not, we decided not to change the municipal code, but the um, election format that's handed out will be very specific on what the requirements are based on the city of Ridgecrest. Uh, the second item is uh, we decided we're going to have this on most of our agendas and not necessarily talk a lot about it, but uh, just to keep us up to date on property and sales tax and how it's going. Uh, the third one is mandatory commercial organic recycling program. That's been mandated by the state of California. And uh, it has to start, well, we're actually behind on getting this started. It applies to mainly restaurants and things like that right now, Ron. Isn't that right? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What was that the question? Organic said? recycling does yes. not apply to residential at this time. It only reply, applies to the commercial sites like restaurants that generate a lot of organic. Correct. We have come to a tentative agreement with waste management. Uh, they are working on the amended agreement now once we get it. I'll um, forward it to the city attorney for review, and then we'll um, I'll bring it back to council. Okay. And the fourth item we discussed was four projects. Um, we directed Mike uh, to go to get together with the chief to work out. We need to have a public hearing, I guess, to discuss that in order in order to apply for grants. And uh, we kind of decided at the meeting that, that if we apply for a grant, it's got to be a combined grant with the county of Kern because it affects both the city of Ridgecrest and the county of Kern. And uh, so that's where we left it, and that's our meeting. Okay, finance. We uh, Our meeting was scheduled for uh, Martin Luther King Day, so it got, uh, I thought it was going to get postponed until next Wednesday, but I haven't seen the agenda or anything for next yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, I just asked him that as well. I'll have to get you that answer. Pardon? You'll get us? Okay. Yes, I'll get you the answer, yeah. When, when she called me, we talked about not having it on Monday. We talked about, did she ever call you, Lindsay, about having it on next Wednesday? I had told her at the, at, so. yes, they asked at um, the okay. economic development meeting. Oh, yes. oh, okay, so, so hopefully we'll have a meeting uh, stand next Wednesday. Okay, infrastructure. Meets uh, next Thursday, week week from Thursday, week from tomorrow. Actually, well, I want to back up to the finance committee. Stan, we did talk about at the last meeting when you were gone that one million dollar, um, the the one million dollar difference that you were talking about. So, I don't know if you, I don't want to repeat myself, but basically, um, we handled we he reviewed. I don't know if you want to address that really fast. Okay. But yeah, we did, huh? It's on. It's on. It's, but it's I just when she doesn't talk to get it, it closer to it. So we did talk about that, <laughs> and we will talk about it again at finance. But I did cover it at the last council meeting. So. Committee meeting. Okay, and council. That's right. You did, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, closer to the mic. Okay, infrastructure. <laughs> we meet next Thursday. All right. You said. I'm sorry. My apologies. Uh, Parks and Rec. We did not meet this month because that was right after the long holiday. Okay, youth advisory. They met. I was, I was not. I was not. A, I'm sorry, um, Miss Lindsay is on there with me as well. So also, um, Rika, can we put 
Lindsay's name on here as well with the youth advisory. Yes. And uh, I was out of town during that time, so if you'd like to share what it was. I, I was unable to attend, but I know Chief McLaughlin was there if he wants to share. But I did talk with him briefly about it, and I think it was a the, the Youth Advisory Committee has been a, a bit discombobulated, and so they're needing some guidance to kind of pull back in and really figure out what their purpose is. And so I think he kind of helps them see that they need to pull it together. So. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Action Committee? We don't meet until March. Yeah. Okay, RACVB, we have a written report here. Mr. Mr. Martin is going to read the report. Uh, a couple of quick highlights. They, December the 17th, the California On Location Awards was held at the Beverly Hilton. Ridgecrest Film Commission submitted 16 nominations, and six were selected as Kohler Award finalists, and Doug, Doug got to sit in the same chair that Oprah got to sit in, so he was excited about that. December the 18th, 2017, Flix, the film liaison on California statewide board of directors held in L.A. film office. Doug and Elizabeth attended January 13 and 14. Doug attended the San Diego Travel and Adventure Show. Uh, January the 16th, Doug worked with the Margot Allen at the base regarding environmental assessment for T&E at the Cuddyback Range. Uh, there's some discussions of limiting that, and uh, that's going to would affect a lot of filming. Uh, it is an incredibly popular place, so they're kind of working together to to try to get that settled. February the 7th, 2018, the Italian foreign nationals will be arriving at China at the naval base, and Doug is working with Deirdre regarding a large group of 200-plus uh, Italians uh, who are coming in, and then there's another 100, and then there's 800 of another group that I'm not allowed to say the name, or they have to shoot me and all that, but the, the bottom line is we're going to have a lot of people visiting from uh, around the world, and uh, so it should be good for business and, and um, around the town. So that's it. Can I add to that that on the 3rd of February, I think it is, uh, we're going to uh, welcome them here. And uh, there's going to be Ridge Project is doing a dinner to support them. Right. So, okay. Pardon me? She didn't hear it. Can you repeat that? There's going to be a dinner that um, that we're going to provide for the uh, 250 Italians at the, it's the third who's of the we? not February third of March. Who's the we? You said who's the we? Ridge Project. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, EDC. We did meet. We talked about um, we will be getting um, some proposals for the community website and calendar, as well as for an economic development consultant looking at what options are available there. Um, and we will be discussing which ones to move forward with at the next committee meeting. Um, and we also talked about the car dealership and um, how to examine how much sales we're missing out on sales tax because we don't have certain dealers here and how we go about looking at that. And we talked about some about how a company like Buxton or one of the others that actually does more brand specific could actually provide that information so that we could provide it with any local groups that may be interested in starting a new dealership. So. Okay, um, the Tribal City Committee did not meet. So other committees, boards, or commissions? I have current current talk tomorrow night. Okay, uh, City Manager's report. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, just to let the council know that our consultant uh, arrived today to begin their uh, assessment or their cost allocation study for uh, building and engineering, as well as a uh, cost allocation study to determine what our appropriate uh, overhead rates should be. Uh, as part of this, uh, consulting will end up with some 
uh, formulas and some software that will help us um, adjust on an annual basis our overhead rates dependent upon you know the needs. Uh, this has been an, an issue that's been brought up by Mr. Retora um, quite a bit, and we want to make sure that uh, whatever rates we're charging are defensible and are within the law. Um, also, I want to introduce tonight, before Mr. Patton speaks and gives you an update on some other matters, I want to introduce to you our new Public Works Director, Bard Lauer. Bard, please stand. If you don't mind, please. Bard started with the city on January 8th. Uh, he has approximately 40 years of uh, engineering experience. Until recently, he was a director of transportation division in El Dorado County. And as a director, he was responsible for over 1,000 miles of center line pavement, 79 bridges, and an extensive drainage infrastructure. Uh, for nine years, from 2004 to 2009, Bard was the operations manager for the streets division in Colorado Springs. And he also has 27 years of road maintenance experience and construction experience in the state of Michigan. Uh, he has a BS and MS in engineering and a Juris Doctorate in law. And he's also nearly completed his master's degree in project management. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, all of you will join me in welcoming uh, Bard on board. Um, I think he is going to be integral in uh, helping us figure out which way to go on fixing our roads within the community. I think he has experience in, uh, and uh, education to help us in that. So with that, well, thank you. Did you want to say anything, say sir? Am I loud enough or you want me to go over there? Oh, you're good. You go go there. Go okay. Go for the right. Go right here. Go right here. It's the TV thing. I know, I know. You can't. Oh, he can't. They won't see if he sits right there. They won't see if he sits right there. It's more comfortable to get up and down. To get up and down. Um, I want to thank the city in general for this opportunity. Um, I look very much forward to helping put together a program that will bring our payment condition index up, um, better maybe better, better advertise our transit system so we have a larger ridership, um, getting the new wastewater plant into um, existence, and uh, in general um, maybe pulling in more grants um, so we can uh, do a better job with engineering. Um, I just look forward to this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Madam Mayor, I do have, um, Mr. Patton does have an update on a few uh, parks and rec issues. Okay. Or construction projects. This will be quick. So just a quick update on the two current projects we still have, uh, we're still working on, of course, the, of course, the Kermagee Sports Complex project on Down Street. Um, so as you can see, this is these are the fields that have been torn apart. It says Shetland Field, Mustang Field, and Pendle Field, but obviously you can't really identify any of them because they're all gone. Um, and also the Bronco fields and the Pony fields. That's that's the five fields we're we're uh, reconstructing out there at the facility. Um, so up to this point, the grading's been done, and the irrigation is complete on the Mustang, <coughs> Pinto, and Shetland fields that you saw there. Um, irrigation is in progress on the Pony and Bronco field. Next week they'll start laying all the the uh, the sod, the grass down, and uh, move forward there. They're they're on pace. They were a little ahead of pace. But due to the rain, they got pushed back by about a week because obviously after you grade the fields, you can't put heavy equipment on it because it will destroy it. So they got a little behind, but they were ahead, so we're about back even again. And we're, uh, uh, like I said, turf installation next week. Uh, estimated completion date is still late April, uh, but I'm confident they'll get, they'll get ahead of schedule again. They're working pretty diligently on it, and that's their goal. So, uh, But everything's going well. Um, Freedom Park Splash Pad. For those of you that haven't looked back, right back here, um, we've started the project a couple of weeks ago. The city had obligations of what we needed to do. We completed those, and they're moving forward. You can see the, the, the giant hole they're digging there is where the actual tank, the water tank, uh, supply tank, is going to be um, dropped in here pretty, pretty shortly. 
and then um, they'll in the next couple of weeks you'll start seeing the uh, the materials uh, and um, uh, being delivered for the project. Um, just a couple more pictures to show how how deep they're going with this this tank and a couple issues we've ha we've had to reroute a couple of utilities and things like that, but nothing major. Uh, completion date is still late March. Um, they're on track. Um, we, there was a couple issues in permitting that that we've dealt with and and uh, have resolved. So uh, right now we don't see any further delays. Um, I think that's that's it. So everything's Thank moving you. along. Any Thank questions? you, sir. Questions? No. I had one quick any question. Questions? Are we planning a a big celebration? When we complete those projects, sir, heck yeah, ribbon cup, heck yeah, or something. Or? <laughs> yeah, you're going to barbecue yes, and feed everybody, right? Absolutely, we're going to out gonna of your own some. personal pocket. <laughs> oh <laughs> like me, being facetious. <laughs> I know that. Okay. I know that. No, but there'll definitely be a celebration because these are good, positive things that we're uh, doing in the community. You know, we've got we've done up John and Pearson Park equipment. Um, there's there's a lot of things still remain to be done, uh, or else we wouldn't be asking for an assessment, but. Um, things are moving along and looking good, and people are enjoying them. I, I hope you guys have had the opportunity to drive by the parks that we've put the new equipment in and see how much use it's getting. Mm -hmm. It's it's incredible. So things are going well. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Others, Mr. Strand? No, ma'am. That completes my report. Okay. Future agenda items. Anybody have any they want to add on? We have so much coming up that we'll be awfully good to be able to get those done. Um, okay, mayor and council comments. Mike, since you were so diligent in waiting. <laughs> I get to go first? You go first. I just want to comment. There's a lot of illness going around in the community right now, so it behooves us to really be careful. Wash your hands a lot and cover yourself up if you're coughing or whatever because... Uh, I've got one employee that's got pneumonia. Um, you know, a couple have had the flu. So, and the flu season is really bad this year. So, let's take care of ourselves. Lauren, see you at the gym tomorrow morning. Uh, Madam Mayor and Council, I just wanted to say thank you, um, for our our Madam Mayor. And City Manager and Councilwoman Stevens were kind enough to attend the uh, Martin Luther King celebration. And uh, it just made our heart, I think it made our community look even better to see that we had some of our city officials took uh, their time uh, and came and celebrated with us. I know all of them wanted to come, but something probably came up. But I just wanted to say I appreciate you guys uh, being there, being in attendance, and our chief of police that was they're in attendance, and uh, the kids love uh, looking at the uh, metal that he has on the side of his hip. Uh, so we appreciate you. And the last thing is we're looking forward to our police department coming and sharing information with our, our church uh, and community about the things that are going on uh, in the city, because we have some kids that actually want to be police officers. Cool. Good job. Okay. That is it. Okay, I wanted to, uh, this is a magazine uh, that we got in Town Living, and I think you all may have copies of it, but I want to read three small quotes, and I thought it was pretty indicative of where we are. Um, the other consideration is the local co connectivity of the community. Is there shopping around? Are there restaurants? Are there any other amenities like museums and cultural institutions. And this is from uh, Krieger um, Economics. And I thought, those are things we need to look at and see where we are. I was pretty surprised. One of the ones that said, according to Pete Delaney of the Myers Research, home buyers are willing to pay premium in order to live close to work, parks, transportation, and other amenity amenities. And the last quote, nearby neighborhood parks and community, community open spaces are especially compelling to multi-generational households. And I thought that was pretty indicative of some of the things we heard here today 
And I invite you, most of the time we get stuff that doesn't seem to apply to what I think we are. And this was a really good magazine, so I was really pleased with it. Wallace. Lindsay. Uh, I was just going to say, um, our one of the representatives from our library has been working on a project, um, and she had applied for a grant for a story walk, and basically it's installed at your existing parks around the paths, and um, it encourages families to get out and walk, and Basically, it's a storybook disassembled, and so you stop along the walking path and read the story. And so every so often, there's new stories published. And so um, she's looking for to get a few additional funds to finalize the project, but it looks like it's moving forward. So I think that'll be a great addition to our parks, too, here. So, okay. Thank you. All right, so motion to adjourn. I'm going to make it and second it. We're adjourned.